So I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you a long way. And that is another thing that no one can ever teach you. Because you, you're you going to have to learn that on your own. You're going to have to figure out how to pull that energy out of your mind on your own. It's not... It's, there's no book you can read that all of a sudden I have it. I've got the technique now. I know how to do it. Yeah. No, it's, it's a, a grind that you have to start and finish on your own. Let me tell you a story about an illiterate kid. Agaton lessons at three, living stateside at six, part of philosophy geek. Thought he was born with a gift, but over 20 years later, thought I could no longer subsist. While the stroke of misfortune and looked down in his crib, in the shadow of wealth, where the Kura banks lived, a single flicker of hope was all that kept him awake, burning all through the night. Every second of every day, the script changed underneath. The very few could see the story was telling himself. Friends just couldn't believe he was on another planet station they couldn't receive, and it never shut off. An eternal heartbeat, an undeniable call, an unquenchable flame, an unavoidable path. Del Toro quest for his age, he left the valley of lost frequency tuned to perceive, hacking into commits and finally bridging the breach. The code world in his mind, like first learning to read, like a lifetime of red suddenly turning to green. So he opened a branch and turned over a leaf, order passing the test, like a database seed, a book that never been, or the movie never been played, a journey no one else lived would ever seek to replicate a song that never been sung vision he could retain so it consumed his mind like a triumphant parade all the christmas and easter's and birthdays that he missed paid the isolation price to become the man that he did so a piece of advice you should take care what you wish when you pick up abroad then you better not miss could be in china or chile or in mountains of mist walking into the fog or ending up a night of wish but i've got no regret that it was written like this quantum entangled in will craft the threads are in since in the Mounds or seas, the battlements or parapet In the words of my friends, the ribonucleic here lick In the dance of the stars, or eternity's whim Cause it's all in my mind, the mithril titanium You know when I was about nine, I learned to play violin You can see it in the song, played by a computer sim So, whatever the cost, whatever the sin Whatever the angels on the head of a pin Whatever the rush, whatever the strings Whatever the throne, politicians or kings Whatever the price, death comes from within So I'll burn it all down, but I'll never let them win If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. No management, no studio, no corporate sponsorships, no old money connections, and no Andreessen and horror wits, no mentor, no prior art, and no industry experience, no safety net, no backups, and no certifications, no rule book, no limits, and no establishment. Just a single laptop and syndication of speech. They say that changing the world, that's maybe not realistic. Dying a day at a time in siren songs of indecision. The prophet Isaiah Sid Mayer's civilization The Manhattan bomb, knowledge versus imagination You might be missing my message, rephrase the honest truth If they have selected the offense And you are their squid People worship the state Parasitic blood-sucking leeches Begging for mafia handouts Goaded by tiny television Free thing demanded free Someone else did the working and building it got stolen from them to fund this entitled lisping We're always being trapped and everything is forbidden You can get wrecked any time, selectively forced into prison While the people are censored, the deep states its omniscient Is this the kind of society that we all want to exist in? But we gotta fight on till we're dead in the ditches Cause I'd rather die free than see tyrants any inches You know the system's corrupt, basically physically sickening people People toiling their lives, giving their time to the rich list So it's live and you're living in a modern day myth Call it a need of joy or an epic odyssey of grief The Argonauts getting fleeced with ribs are lifting the ships There will be no real non-controlled currency in the world Steve, baby, baby, baby. We're coming 
Envoy Banks. Increasing the block size to 32 megabytes right now. What would be the top five arguments that would get um, hurled against me? Oh, that's a good one. There, there are a few that the big blockers uh, uh, got, got right. Ching, like all these coins splash into the wallets of all the winners. I love that. There's a new threat out there. It's crypto. All right, hello and welcome back to the Bitcoin Cash podcast following Bitcoin Cash on its rise to global reserve currency. This is episode number 108, Emergent Coding Chips and Copa featuring mini... Totally didn't put Alex's name on the slide. <laughs> All right. All right. Down and down yet. New stream set up. <laughs> I am. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm watching the stream and <laughs> I see us I just see the slide. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna run yeah, it back. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right, okay. <clears throat> Give me the countdown and I'm gonna rock it. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Bitcoin Cash podcast. Following Bitcoin Cash on its rise to global reserve currency. This is episode number 108, Emergent Coding Chips and Copa featuring Mini Satoshi. Today is Sunday, the 18th of February, 2024. I'm your host, Jeremy. Jet is doing the producing. And before we get into the show, we're running a new Flipstarter, flipstarter.bitcoincashpodcast.com com go check it out we'll uh talk a bit more about that at the end right our guest today is alex aka mini satoshi who is a bitcoin cash community contributor and bch live stream operator he's done some of the streams with me for the upgrade days and things like that i asked him before the show how he wanted to be introduced because he sort of does a bit of everything and also nothing quite defined in particular and he said no no it's all good a <laughs> bch community <laughs> contributor so welcome to the show man how are you doing how do you get into bitcoin appreciate it man good to finally be on um i'll, I'll try and keep it short because i i can i tend to ramble sometimes um lord knows with me on twitter oh. um yes yeah, so i first got introduced to bitcoin Actually, in 20, 2009, 2010, when my father gave me a Financial Times article talking about Bitcoin, uh, I was very young at the time, and I did not pay it as much money. I was playing with technology, but I was like, oh, cool. And I, I moved on, went back to my Minecraft. Uh, it was really in 2013 that I started to pick up on it a bit and start paying attention. Uh, 2015, I started getting, getting into um, GPU mining. Uh, not so much for BTC, but for others. Uh, by 2017, I had a pretty large uh, farm. Uh, I kind of maxed out the electrical capacity of a home. Um, and But at the same time, I was since 2015 onward, I was starting to use Bitcoin for what it was meant for, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. I paid a couple people in it. I bought a few things in it. Not, not so much, but a little bit here and there. Um, and just get fast forward a little bit, in 2017, I was, I was very much looking forward to the SegWit 2x upgrade. Um, not so much the SegWit part, but the 2x, I was like, this is needed, we need it now, we need it yesterday, a year ago. Um, and I knew about Bitcoin XT, 
I didn't pay it as much mind as I probably should have at the time. Um, and I then I heard about Bitcoin Cash. Granted, I didn't hear much good because of the massive censorship and everything else that I've been fed. I was on the R Bitcoin subreddit. I didn't see so much of it, but I heard the few arguments and I had nothing against it. Uh, but I just I thought it might go the way of Bitcoin XT. Um, so a week before the fork, I was like, I was still the mindset. It's like, you know, I'll probably keep it, but I might swap some of my new BCH for BTC. Well, a week after the fork, I around then, shortly thereafter, I swapped all my BTC for BCH. <laughs> probably <laughs> not for the betterment of uh, total net worth, but that's what I did. And very quickly thereafter, I was working with uh, what was the Bitcoin Cash Fund, transformed to Bitcoin Cash Association to Bitcoin Cashers. Um, working with a bunch of people in the community, setting up uh, local meetups, doing, um, setting up, um, what is it it's called, uh, scavenger hunts and otherwise. Uh, I did a lot. Um, every time I go to a restaurant, I, besides tipping normally, I'd always carry around my gift.bitcoin.com paper wallets with one, two, five, ten dollars on them. Always put them inside the receipts. Shockingly, about 80% of people actually redeem them, which was crazy to me. I uh, never expected that. Um, and yeah, I've been involved ever since. Um, it, it was really the 2017 fork that sh sh opened my eyes as to how much has I, I did not see in the past. Um, and it's just like this, this really is the future and this is what we need to fight for. So that's, that's the very brief history without rambling too much. Yeah, so do you have any reflections then having been involved particularly over that period as to the bsv split and the ecash split obviously were the two sort of major phases before we came into this current uh, period more of stability do you have any reflections on any of that the bsv one was probably the most unfortunate um there's a lot of i'm not a big fan of that community um but you know, they've been generally friendly to me when, when I would engage. But at the time, it was just so vicious an attack where CSW said he's going to destroy PCH. And fortunately, we, we had a lot of miners come to the support to protect uh, the BCH chain. And, um, you know, I follow that closely. But that, that, was, that was probably the most disheartening of it because it was so soon after the BTC fork that it was like, man guys what are we doing like this is ridiculous we're just we're killing we're hurting our chances at actually becoming this reserve currency but at the same time it, it you know it kind of gave us a fresh start um and same with the ecash split um you know the one thing the bsvers were somewhat right about was about what was going to happen with what ended up being ecash um and that's the one thing the one point i can agree with them on is that they saw what's not all of us did. Uh, certainly not what I did. I never expected a dev tax to be put into place. Uh, sorry, a, a minor tax. Uh, now 32%. It's ludicrous. And people defending it, it's just it's a whole other discussion. Um, but at the same time, it, it, it kind of cleaned up the community. We got rid of some of the psychopaths. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and, you know, now I think we have a much clearer path than we ever did before, which is the, which is the upside to all of this. Yeah, and what about sort of smart BCH? Were you super involved in that, or you weren't so no, bullish on so, that? Yeah, I, this I have very strong thoughts on. Uh, I thought it was very cool, but I put barely anything into it. At most, I spent a little bit on a, a couple LNS domains, and that was it. Because I was like, we don't have a trustless bridge yet. I'm waiting for Shawgate. I'm waiting for Shawgate. I'm waiting for Shawgate. I will not trust a custodian, and unfortunately. And I thought I thought CoinFlex was good at the time. I never thought they'd do what they did, but I was never going to. I feel a lot of the community got put the cart before the horse and trusted went against everything that they preached for so long in going for a trust trust a, a system that requires trust rather than being trustless. And that's unfortunately what screwed over a lot of people. So I thought it was phenomenal technology. I thought it was great that we're doing this, easy to port over EVM applications, and we saw some of it happen. Um, but, you know, again, cart before the horse, and if you open up your opportunity to get screwed, you will get screwed. So I, I didn't spend too much time uh, or money in that, but 
it was very unfortunate to say the least we've just had one after another of getting cut down but we're still here which is probably the most encouraging thing of all of it yeah absolutely and what about today where are you at today in the bch ecosystem what are you either working on or sort of most excited about and looking forward to for 2024 cash tokens are very exciting um i i i have a bunch probably too many of random nfts and all these different projects mainly because i don't care about them so much i care more just to support the the, the community so that's why i bought too many minted too many um but you know most of my time these days is uh, i i contribute small amounts on on flip starters uh here and there but um I, i'm working with a few different um builders in the community and privately funding their endeavors if they need to take flights somewhere if they have hotel stays if they have some tech development i i try my best to fund what i what i reasonably can um because personally i don't have the time to spend as much as i did in the past and working 100 120 hour weeks not fun but at least with it and uh, i'm working on some my company is back i work in the financial services space uh, my company is back now what my ideas and what what i'm doing they they understand uh you know my knowledge in the space and so though i can't disclose anything at this moment when they when certain deals might close i i could talk more about them but i'm working with some very large companies in the crypto space that do have friendly you know ties to the bch community as well uh or the bch ecosystem um so that's that's it in a nutshell so kind of my day job spending some time on it where i can um funding where i can uh more privately though um and then yeah i mean i i can't wait for this this conference in slavania <laughs> and also in argentina i'm so hyped up i was sad we didn't get one last year but now we got two this year which is about as the most i could probably attend in a year reasonably and i'm i'm, I'm so hyped i can't wait to attend i i I can't. I know you're going to be there. I, I hope everyone watching this is, is at least considering going. Yes. So speaking of that, we've got a, an announcement on the Bliss uh, conference, which is obviously coming up in Slovenia the 14th and 15th of May. So that's 86 days away. So the countdown is on, but there's still time to go on tapswap.cash and get yourself a ticket, line yourself up with hotels and flights and everything and come along and even better than that if you want to come along but you're looking at the finances maybe it's a bit of a stretch well have i got an offer for you so jonathan ryan and i who are organizing the conference have agreed that we're going to do a giveaway of two jessica nft tickets worth 0 0.84 roughly bch so you can come to the ticket you can get a ticket for free all you have to do is make a promotional video for Bliss. So I made one with the Light Your Matches. I also made the Tap Swap tutorial. And we thought, you know, we can work on some more stuff to promote it ourselves. But maybe we need to just crowdsource this. Maybe the community has some amazing ideas in the past when we've done the meme competitions with Luke Pryor. We've got some really good results out of that. So for the next month, put your thinking caps on and you can make any kind of promotional video. You can use AI, you can make it funny. It could be a crypto guide, maybe like, um, you know, how to use BCH guru or something and then how to, you know, uh, trade that at bliss or I, I don't know, whatever, anything related to Bitcoin cash that in the end is promoting bliss, come to bliss, check out www.bliss.cash right any kind of video that you think will get attention can be any length can be 30 seconds can be 10 minutes what, whatever you want and uh if you make a video like that submit it either on twitter on the announcement thread of uh the competition you'll see it there on the bliss page or you can email it to me jeremy at bitcoincashpodcast.com or you can send it to me on telegram at bitcoincash podcast now there is a 
link on the slide, with, which will be in the description as well too, with the sort of full rules, uh, such as it were. But basically the idea is make a promotional video. Jonathan, Ryan and I are gonna choose the best, either the best one, and we might give them two tickets, or maybe if there's two really good submissions, we'll give them one ticket each. Or if there's two amazing submissions, we could maybe even give them two tickets each. But I think the plan is probably to give away at least two tickets. So get thinking and then come along. I'm really looking forward to see what people come up with. And if you already have a ticket, you can obviously still enter and then bring along a friend <laughs> for free. Uh, so maybe look into that. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing you. So you're gonna you're gonna be at Bliss. And, yes, sir. Uh, you've been you've been hearing the hearing the hype. What's uh, what's the most exciting part about it that you're you're keen for? For me, it, meeting all the builders in person again. Uh, the uh, conference, the last conference was was wonderful. Met a lot of people for the first time in person, and I'm just I'm just excited to do it again. It's great to put like real like face to the name uh, rather than it, you know being online is great, but seeing people in person is is, is really just a whole nother level. Um, also, I feel just adds like little bit of that more legitimacy to to the project as well by having these actual conferences and events that people attend uh and show, showcasing you know people using the currency uh in day-to-day -day spending and so a little impromptu but i'll give half a bch to each ticket uh winner for this as well for additional spending money there we go <laughs> all right wow surprise announcement so this the stakes are rising not only can you get free tickets you can also have uh half of bch to uh spend at the conference which you'll have no problem doing because obviously there's going to be uh vendors there and you can also transact with all the all the people that are in attendance so yeah all right love it <laughs> I love to hear. It. There you go. Uh, I'm looking forward to those submissions. So get get your thinking caps on, and I'll see you at Bliss in uh, in May. It's going to be absolutely epic. My favorite thing, meeting everyone is great. I'm not going to say that's not that's an awesome part of it. my favorite part of uh, the BCH22 that we did though was all the incidental BCH commerce. That was my favorite thing where. Yep. You could go to restaurants with people and then suddenly people are paying each other in BCH. I love that. Just little like deals and little like people just transact, you know, that's what humans are about. That's what economics is. And so as we're so used to having to try and explain BCH to a lot of the people that you want to transact with outside of the community, you know, everyone does so much advocacy work and, hey man, can I trade you in Bitcoin cash? You have to give them this huge like pitch, you know, and show them how a wallet works and all that stuff. It's just such a change of pace when you're not only in person, but also like everyone there is just on board with it. And the one or two people that aren't fucking love it because they get shown one time how to use a wallet and then they see it happening around them and they think this is great. And that's just, it proves to me that, that we can actually do this, that we can make this a world system, right? Uh, because you can see it happen in a small case with a hundred people, and then you're just like, "There's no reason that this couldn't work everywhere, right?" So, no, exactly. That's, that's like when it, when it, when I was there is like, "It's great if I pay the bill, then the people would just pay me via it's it's easy." Uh, I showed the prime minister's son how to spend BCH, and I got him to buy water bottles like for him and I don't remember his friend's name. Uh, I don't remember other than their names. So I feel bad now, but uh, I showed them how to use BCH because they were just there because their father was there and they didn't really care. But, you know, I, I talked to them for a little while, got them on the BCH.game spin wheel. They won some. I, God, I gave away so much money at that too because eventually <laughs> they ran out of money, so I started funding it. Um, and, but and then they they went off. They bought whatever. They, they actually thought it was cool. It, it was neat to see that that click from suddenly. Oh, it's just something random on the internet. A bunch of nerds use it <laughs> to like. Oh, this actually works. Uh, even in my um, even in my even in my uh, my office now, I have this little little small BCH ecosystem going where if one of us buys buys lunch, um, then the others pay back in BCH. They got a little little tiny circular economy within there too. So. I, all these, wherever these are, these little things, I, I think are, you said it exactly. That's, it's so cool to like little by little, just expanding it, just like grassroots part. It's great. Yeah. And that's an experience you'll struggle to get anywhere else. So 
if you're on the fence or still considering it or whatever, just highly recommend it. www.bliss.cash and uh, come come meet up with us because you'll have a fucking blast, I promise. Okay, I'm going to check out the price. So this week, BCH moving up a little bit, at least against Fiat. Today, it is $267.94 US. One BDC buys 194.2 BCH, so we are down a little on that ratio. And one ETH buys 10.5 BCH, so also down a little on that ratio. Alex, you were mentioning being in the financial services industry do you pay much attention to the markets and what do you make of the price performance recently and going forward so my job is more focused on capital raises mergers acquisitions and stuff like that so less on the markets themselves but i've been following closely uh i saw when we broke the top 20 again and passed litecoin for the 10th time which is why i always tell people it's like you know we passed litecoin like we've done it before let's let's calm down a little bit here guys we're kind of right there um but no so the beats so the most uh, uh you know i'll get into just a little what i've seen is the the btc etf launching it went almost exactly now i i suggested it was going to for months Grayscale liquidated billions of dollars because it was trading under the net asset value uh, and frankly went a little lower than I thought it would. Um, whoever said it was going to 10,000, I thought it was ridiculous. But, um, you know, I thought it was like, yeah, it's going to trade down 10 plus percent and did. Uh, and now it's, it's going back up. But what we still see is that the Grayscale Trust, it's BCH Trust, uh, BCH still trades at a massive premium to the, to the asset value. Um, and we just saw the first uh, Ethereum spot ETF applications go to the SEC, I think, last week. Uh, and, you know, even though Gary Gensler, you know, he goes back and forth a little bit, he has said in the past that the four cryptos that are not securities are BTC, BCH, ETC, ETH, and uh, can't even speak, uh, LTC. Um, you know, they've been around for so long. Um, and, I'm not a big proponent of ETFs, and frankly, I thought the SEC, including Gensler and some um, another individual from there, they make great points. It's like, yeah, we're going to allow the BTC ETF because we, we have to, but doesn't this kind of defeat the purpose of what it was meant for? And I was like, yeah, okay, so these guys, the SEC, they, they may I may not like them so much or their opinions on things, but they nailed this dead on the head. They, they crushed the BTC maxis with just that simple statement is like it should never have needed it but um, on the flip side since it's inevitably inevitably it inevitably happened my english god uh, it's my first language and i still can't speak it um uh, <laughs> um you know i still see it as a, as a net positive because um when and i think it's a matter of when not if the bch etf happens and I'm thinking, I have no insight on this, so that's why I can speak to it. Uh, could be the next 12, 18 months. Um, considering it's consistently traded at a massive premium to the, to the asset value, that, could, that should significantly help the price. And frankly, as much as I don't like the, the idea of it, price is going to be one of the biggest things that gets people into this ecosystem and gets them to stay. And I'm hoping that we would, even if it's custodial and it's on, it's for people's 401ks or whatever, I'm happy because I'll throw some money in my 401k into BCH then. Like, why the heck not? I could do it now on the OTC, but it makes it a little more challenging. So, but once there'd be an ETF, I, I would absolutely throw a little bit of my brokerage money into it, which otherwise I, I couldn't as easily, at least not without the tax benefits. So, um, Short term, I think I, I've rambled on here a bit. <laughs> Short term, uh, you know, I, I think it's great. I, I'm hoping that we close this gap a little bit more with BTC, though. I, I love to reclaim the like one to 100. Uh, and I I think there's a good chance of it, uh, but fortunately, no insights. But I, I mean, Jeremy, do you, do you have what? what you, I'm curious because I, I hear you talk about it a lot, but I'm not not face to face. What do you think on, on this? Yeah, well, that's the thing. My 
my sense is always that we're just going to be sliding a bit on the ratio most of the time. Like I'm just never really that surprised by that because it's just kind of the way it always goes until we get a sudden spike, right? That was the same thing. We're just sliding down to, you know, 250, 247 to one. And then just there was that period where we did episode 85 where it just went back up to under 100 to one, right? So I wouldn't be surprised to see that same thing happening. And I'm quite optimistic because even our ratio is going down but we're moving up the coin market cap rankings right so that goes to show that everything else is also kind of sliding against btc so we're not sort of unique in that regard the problem is if we're just falling off a cliff and the rest of the competition isn't but that's not really what's what's happening and i yeah. guess there is more money in btc at the moment only because uh, well, not only because it's sort of the early start of the bull cycle period where traditionally more of the money goes into BTC, but also they had those ETFs and the hype and blah, blah, blah. So yep. I think that kind of accounts for how well they're doing. I don't know that we're going to see any big reversal on the ratio, but I'm fairly bullish uh, for BC. It's weird because I'm bullish BCH USD, but I'm and I'm uh, bearish BTC BCH, but I'm also like not that bullish BTC USD. I think we, like I've said, there was maybe a chance we'd underperform the all time highs and so forth in this cycle. Like I tend to think in the past, if there'd been an ETF, the euphoria would be insane and it would be straight to all time highs and the whole world going off about it. That hasn't really happened. I mean, it, pumped up a bit and i guess maybe it takes time for all the money to filter in but i don't i just my sense is just the world's moved past btc a little bit it's not where the action is in crypto really i don't think so i mean you look at the massive buy volumes right i mean one just one of the etfs uh, i think if i recall correctly the blackrock etf has now cumulatively purchased about 110,000 btc some massive amount but yet the price doesn't move all that significantly. Exactly. And do you have Sailor uh, buying with MicroStrategy? First, it was accumulating a bunch of debt. And some people like to say, oh, it's cash on the balance sheet. They had ba basically no cash. Um, they accumulated like $2 billion of debt uh, to buy BTC, and then they, uh, they went off and they just continue every quarter. They're issuing more shares. They're creating shares out of thin air, diluting the stock, in order to buy more BTC. And it seems to have been working as a strategy thus far, uh, micro strategy strategy. Um, but at the same time, these are so there's so much buy volume, yet it's not going really astronomically. We're not getting the god candles that Max Kayser continues to post about every freaking week. Um, and I'm not, yeah, exactly. I'm not surprised at all. I think the market's kind of moved past it. And you got people that are getting out of their positions. There's not the hype that people like to. Uh, say there is they, they that's moved on to other projects and other industries um, but at the same time all these people buying it there's I don't think there's this much like they never be able to realize these gains yeah they might have a paper profit right now but if they started liquidating any bit of it we saw what happened with grayscale it wasn't even that big a liquidation it's a couple billion dollars on a couple hundred billion market cap and it just it tanked it by 10 20 percent um, so I, I just I, I'm very curious as to what's what's going to happen when um, it when people if people decide to start selling out of positions, what will happen? Because I agree. I don't I don't think there's the hype there once was these huge buys. That's that's I agree, like what you're saying there is spot on. Right. You see all the time. It's like the thing du jour on the BDC side. Is there like look at how much uh, they have those charts, you know, of like, look at these inflows on Coinbase, like 50,000 BTC inflow or outflow or whatever it is. Yep. And then, you know, Sailors just bought a new stack of 50,000. Naib Bukele just bought another 20,000, whatever. BlackRock <laughs> bought some. And you're like, yeah, but if these guys are buying up these huge chunks of it, every trade has two parties, right? Somebody must be selling to them. Uh, who is it? Is it just the miners that just, you know, they've got an OTC deal with the miners, maybe? Is it like some other big, you know, it's like the earlier retail, the earlier institutional are like getting out. These guys are the exit liquidity in some sense. 
for the people that already made their 10x i i don't know seems like we're gonna we're gonna see an interesting time with the halving though because yeah the supply is gonna reduce but the majority of miners will if prices don't move up more from here the majority of miners are gonna just be unprofitable again and i i fully expect to see more bankruptcies uh, in the space and we already had two of the largest miners uh publicly traded at least go bankrupt uh and learning the last cycle or the last year i guess uh, i fully expect that we're going to see a lot more because unless the price moves up significantly uh and i'm just i don't see that happening yet uh maybe it will maybe it will maybe i'm wrong um i do think it's going to move up but people are saying oh we're going to get a god candle 250,000 or a million maybe yeah that's optimistic that's that's i mean i don't know man i don't nothing's I don't impossible I a in crypto. Bucks, not a chance I, yeah <laughs> nothing's impossible in crypto but, but it yeah. just seems like such such hope especially when it's such like yeah there's not every time in every previous cycle including even the last two the run-ups are driven by retail euphoria that's what happens and they're killed by on-chain fees and now we have yep. less retail euphoria and more on-chain fees than ever so i'm mm -hmm. just i'm still i still can't see past that and maybe i don't know maybe the price does go super high but i just the retail adoption of bdc as a payment system is just dead and we're going to talk about that but okay let's 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 get on with what's actually going on in crypto then so I've got a slide here called rising transactions because at for a long period of the show, we used to check in on the on-chain transaction volume on every single show, but I stopped doing it because it was kind of boring and people didn't really like it in the survey. It wasn't, there wasn't really much to say about it, but now things have sort of changed. And I think it's worth highlighting this one time. So over the last about year, the on-chain daily transactions for BCH have gone from about 10 or 15,000 to closer to between you know 50 and 80,000 per day and if you zoom in a little bit I've got a zoomed in view of that over the last couple of months it's not just like an organic flat increase it's quite spiky some days it's quite high and then other days it's back into that 15 20k range now turns out we actually know the reason for that which is that along with gen generally adoption of bch does seem to be growing right that's but that's the and more apps and so forth but that's the minority part of it the biggest driver of this huge on-chain transactions comes from the emergent coding project in townsville with the australian uh, guys that are down there and so they now have moved out of their sort of early testing phase and they're in some kind of closed beta phase so i asked uh well shadow of harboring i asked noel who's in charge of that project for an update in the telegram channel and this is what he said because we were watching this on-chain transaction volume going up he said shadow of harboring thanks for reaching out for an update as you know we permanently booted the components market at the end of november and presently build the applications whereby every supplier is paid cash for every component they supply something not possible with any other cryptocurrency. While the tech has taken the long road to market, we wanted the integrity of building our tech slash infrastructure using components. This quarter, we have begun to release the tech to a limited number of developers around the world and plan to grow this number as we approach a public launch, likely in Q2. DM me if you would like to be considered in these early stage releases. So we will discuss the whole thing more with noel on this show uh once it is live to get into all the nitty-gritty details of it but the idea is to have bitcoin cash payable for custom built automated software development uh and this project has been like years in the making like years and years and years in the making and the rising transaction volume uh noel said they do about 150,000 channel opens or closes i think 150,000 must be channel opens and maybe another 150,000 closes 
which represents more than 50 billion payments per week at the moment. So when we see these on-chain transactions, right, let's say 150,000 transactions in a week, that's not 150,000 payments. It's actually 150,000 channel opens in a kind of BCH version of the Lightning Network, right, a payment channel network between the various things that they're uh, making that process more than 50 billion off-chain payments as well too so this is an insane <laughs> volume of economic activity and this is still at the small scale so this can you know this can potentially be one of the secret weapons that bch has had in the background and we might be seeing more of it by q2 but since it's starting to show up on chain now i thought i'd already bring it up now i don't know how much you know about this project alex but what i do know is that at bch 22 you and I were on a table with Noel. We had a really nice dinner there and we talked a bit about this. So do you have any thoughts oh. on this scenario for us? <laughs> yeah. I've actually been keeping up with him on this. I, I'm going to be, I'm joining in the second wave in next week uh, of testing. We'll see if, if, I, if I have enough time to actually fully use it, but I'm going to at least, I'm going to at least uh, take a look at the product. Um, the, um, I think one of the other things he mentioned, uh, this part uh, I'm more rusty on, is that for he mentioned like a scenario, even like I think like I think he mentioned a scenario similar to like a gas station where you open up a channel and it's every like every like fraction of a gallon or liter or whatever is charging to charging to that. So it's charging like in the moment in that channel rather than waiting for the transaction to finish or something like that, which opens up an, a, another range of um opportunity so the technology is very cool but obviously i mean and unless you've heard more than what you said now but yeah, yeah that's that's about all i've i've heard about it it seems very cool but i'm I, i'm more curious to see what happens when it actually launches and how it's going to be utilized but i know he said he's you know the teams are working or trying to get something like this to work for i think he said more the better part of like two decades and bitcoin was the technology that allow them to actually was was the technology actually allowed this to happen um so all in all i'm just i'm very excited for this project i'm hoping i get some time to actually play around and test with and test it um but yeah no i'm, I'm just very curious to see where, where it actually ends up um and what, what happens it, it it is such a cool technology it is so cool i'm, I'm very excited <laughs> Yeah, so the specifics is going to have to wait, I think, basically until they're ready to go public. I've also discussed it with him and, you know, had a bit of a bit of a look at it, not not in all that great uh, detail, to be honest. And it's it's kind of a big thing. It's hard to get your head around exactly how it works, even for me as a software developer and obviously, you know, BCH obsessive. So what I'm taking from it really is that they must be getting close to an actual release because this has been a long time in the works. There's been a lot of, yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But if they are now running it with people actually doing development and the fact that we're seeing transactions show up on chain, to me, that's just the biggest, because Noel has said to me several times, yeah, yeah, you know, on this time frame, on that time frame, that, you know, yeah. it comes and goes, right? When you're doing a big project, especially in software development, it can always take longer than expected. So I was not that surprised about that. But now that we're starting to see significant volume ramp up on chain, they it's not just testing. They wouldn't just be doing that just to try it out, right? There's got to be some real clients and real economic yeah. activity starting to happen. So again, listeners to the show, I understand that maybe this is all a bit vague and uh, you might just have to wait. <laughs> like I said, hopefully Q2. But hopefully sometime this year, definitely, we'll do a full episode where we go into all the all the specifics of that. But if anybody has been looking at the on-chain transactions and wondering, like, what's going on here, that that's kind of what it is. It's the emergent coding firing up, which just goes to show as well. Here, I've got a community comment of the week. It comes from Kaylin Kulianu, uh, the BCHN dev, who said, did you guys notice we had a 16 megabyte block the other day, the now 50% of max block size default we have for the latest BCHN 27.0.0 seems to 
be working. So I jumped on that and said, this 16 megabyte block that got mined uh, in the last week had 0 0.17 BCH in fees, which means that if we had a 20X to 320 megabyte blocks, then we would be, you know, and assuming nothing else changes, that would be 3.4 BCH of fees, which is enough to replace the post harvesting coin reward. So this is just to get, we're starting to get a bit of a sense of what would it take for the chain to be sustainable and economically viable in the long term. Now, Jonathan Silverblood also chimed in on that and he said, well, a different way of thinking about it, instead of thinking you've got a 20X to 320 megabytes, is to think that we need to 5X over the next eight years because then there'll be two more halv halvings which will bring it down and then we would be sustainable at that level. So if you think of the problem over the an eight year period, that certainly seems sustainable. Now, of course, that would have to be 5X from that one 16 megabyte block would need to be every block, but that's kind of what we need to be shooting for. And just, you can see the insane difference that even just this emergent coding is making already not to speak about, you know, other apps that might be developed in that period of time and ongoing traction of the community, uh, you know, in the general network effect of, of people transacting, right? So I take away from this that it is working. Like we, the BCH community is starting to put up results. We just need to accelerate that, right? This is the other, the other side of it though, is that for the 5X thing to, to uh, you know, it, until we have an economy that's fully circular on BCH, uh, for that 5X eight year thing to fully make sense, we'd also need 4X price growth. Actually, probably more because of inflation of regular US dollars. So you'd have inflation adjusted, you need 4X price growth to keep the fiat value the same of the reward overall, uh, which I think is certainly that, But Hang on, that so might not I'm matter as much though in this context because we're only talking about replacing the the block subsidy, which is denominated in BCH, it would it would uh, be less secure. No, in yeah, yeah. Term, but you're right. But no, no, also, uh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, that that's a good clarification. Uh, in terms in terms of fiat land, though, um, it, it, we need a price, but also forex is very reasonable for such a small market cap like us. I mean, what, what's our market cap now? It was on the price size uh, like five billion. Uh, five, five billion. Three. Yeah. Five billions, nothing. Yeah, and, and the grand scheme of things. I mean, just it wasn't that long ago. I closed a deal where I moved four hundred plus million dollars of deposits from just one bank to another. Uh, it's like it's which is crazy. Just how small of numbers these things are in reality in the in the, the world of finance. So to move up eight at, uh, to move up four x is not a big thing, and it does not require that much money to be pumped in. It just requires enough people to not sell and enough people to be willing to pay up. And frankly, our market cap was over, uh, if you looked at the Grayscale Trust, uh, if you were to you know adjust for it, um, our market cap was over 10 billion already. So no, more than that, right? Because it was two and a half times the, so it was like, I don't know, 12 plus billion dollar market cap at one point. Like we could absolutely go up significantly and hold that price too so my my fiat comment is just for the perspective but at the same time it's not unreasonable at all and what do you make i i also thought this was interesting because callum was obviously excited about getting a 16 megabyte block and to me again that was probably you know from the emergent coding stuff yep. but to me that's just a sign that like it was unremarkable right there's so much chatter especially you know in the bdc community or ltc or elsewhere where they're like oh bigger blocks is never going to work everything's going to break it's all going to centralize <laughs> blah 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 but it like it it doesn't obviously that was just a one-off instance that's different to having 16 yep. megabyte blocks all the time but it just like the network just is so smooth nobody even noticed that except yep. except for this comment calling it out right and to me I, yeah, I think that's just once we are doing that kind of traffic regularly, it just destroys the FUD of, oh, big blocks is never going to work, right? I, I, no, 100%. I, I exactly as you said. I, I love how unremarkable it was. It's like, great. 
it um it it worked it happened great let's move on i mean it, it the fact that it just happens we don't have some kind of issue i, I don't want to I don't want to linger on this too much, but you know when BT when BSV went to their Terra node or something, every application fell out of sync for a month. Electrum servers wouldn't sync. Their biggest apps did not sync. It did not work. Uh, so which is obviously unreasonable amounts of scaling too quickly on a mainnet. But for us to just be able to oh 16 megabytes that's 16 x BTC scale right now, no problem. Easy. That's perfect. And that's that's frankly. I mean, we we need way more in the future, but for now, I mean that that's a that's that's great. I mean, sixty megabyte blocks would handle pretty much every. But I mean, what was it? Um, we can handle BTC, ETH, LTC, and all like the major caps in like eight megabytes. I think is is I think it was sixteen. I think it was sixteen. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin Cash Order said if if we were doing sixteen megabyte blocks every time, that's the equivalent to the on chain traffic of all of crypto as it is today. I mean, there, there you go, and we did it without a, without a hitch, right? Uh, so, yeah, this is this is great. I, I love how unremarkable it was. Yeah, it's just a really good thing for us to keep checking in on, and just that sensible scaling. We don't we don't need to be going crazy, but we do need to just keep making progress in the community. Is so, yeah, that's it. People's nodes were not dying, services were not going offline. Nobody had to make an announcement. The BCH community has just screwed up their you know <laughs> integration with our exchange. Like, literally nothing so it just goes to show that uh it is it is working it is working we just need to drive the the traffic because the the space is already there okay i wanted to chat with you a bit about chips the chip process the i don't really want to say infamous but the <laughs> known <laughs> the known process uh for adding upgrades to the bitcoin cash protocol or even maybe the community generally as we're going to see with the abla upgrade on the 14th and 15th also tying into having uh larger blo blocks but you and i when we were in st kitts right we uh started talking about yep. this idea that the upgrades would be on saturdays instead of at the moment it's may the 15th right so it changes every year some years it's wednesday yep. some years it's friday some years it's sunday right every it just depends on the calendar it shifts around but we had this idea having been the ones who were running the live streams that yep. we would be able to get more hype and more traction and more media coverage and so forth if we did it on a weekend uh, why because it's very simple to understand that in general big concerts big sports events big uh you know live streams of different things big concerts like if you have it on the weekend people have free time and they can tune in and and watch it and be involved they're not at work most of the w world is working monday to friday so if you have a yeah. big event at midday on wednesday which is like what you know we're going to have kind of this year in the middle of the week then uh then less people are just going to be available to tune in and it was yeah. our thought that we want to be better about promoting the bitcoin cash community to that just the average person so given that the chip process is the standard for how these things are done we thought we'd have a crack at it now this is quite unique because it's not a technical change right there's no code really that needs to be written or written any differently it's literally just coordinating the community at also scale consensus. so exactly so i wanted to try this uh with you because i thought we could learn a lot about firstly just first-hand experience of how the process is and then secondly to see if we could set a precedent that the community could coordinate on large-scale objectives like this through this same process it didn't have to involve code changes and this or that right so yeah. talk to me a little bit about our chip and how and just just to clarify one more thing i know emergent reasons is going to be like why is jeremy bringing this up again this is a <laughs> terrible idea like what I, i'm not bringing this up to say we're starting a big campaign to get this chip through at this you know current moment i just want to talk about the the concept of of doing it and then you know we can talk about the specifics or actually implementing it at another time so just this is a theoretical discussion 
Go on. Yeah. So, I mean, as you said, we, we started discussing it back in the last BCH conference. And when we just when it went around little by little to the different members of the community, it seemed to have support, a lot of it, actually, um, because of the very, exactly you said, the very common thing, major sports days and other events are on weekends, typically. I mean, there's, I think it's called Super Bowl Sunday, and that's for a reason. Um, and I mean, particularly, look, look at the restaurants and establishments like Chick-fil-A that they don't work on Sundays. But I understand, so that's where I can understand, okay, well, some of the developers are not happy because, oh, that's a weekend that they want off. Similarly, like Chick-fil-A would give all their employees Sunday off. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into the, the weeds of it about, oh, it's just one week in the year or whatever, it's better for the overall community or not. Uh, but we learned a lot about the ship process. Um, you know, there are certain frustrating parts to it where the backlash was almost immediate. Uh, and I think a little bit unwarranted how harsh it was from the beginning. Um, but I also get it. There's, um, it, you know, there, there, you re it requires a lot of convincing, like this, this, um, algorithmic block size limit, right? Uh, took a long time to come to place. The first discussions of it were, I think, back in 2017 of some idea of this. It was the original BIP at the time. Um, even things like cash tokens, like uh, of very like original ideas of this existed for a long time, but they took forever to get through. And, you know, I, I understand it requires a lot of consensus. It requires, you know, this needs a change. You have to show why it needs a change rather than just changing because it's going to be better. Um, and so, you know, on one hand, while I'm frustrated with not necessarily the result as much as the process on uh, how unclear, for instance, there's guidelines of, oh, this is how a chip process works. And then we're told, uh, oh, that's completely irrelevant. There is no process, but there is a process, but it's not that process. Then where is the process? Oh, it's not documented. So it, it's that part's frustrating. But at the same time, it's also eye opening is like, okay, well, this is something that is, I don't want to say it's a perfect system, but it's probably a better system than not having it because the last thing we need is a bunch of random people making changes that the majority of the community doesn't agree with. Um, so, I mean, personally, I just like to see there be like, some semblance of a formal process for this. I get it. There's no central body, so you can't have a perfect guideline, but um, it'd be helpful to anyone wanting to come in, be it a developer or not, making any kind of proposal um, for this, uh, for, for anything, because it, it also, be, especially because if people are so quick to attack certain ideas, um, it, it's, it's also going to limit who wants to propose them in the first place. Um, and so it'd be, and I, I understand there's been a lot of attacks to our community. The Bitcoin cash community is probably the most attacked of any. I mean, look at from all the splits from BSV, XCC, Nexa, uh, God, whatever, smart BCH, whatever else, I understand the frustration. A lot of money has been lost. A lot of progress and time has been lost that maybe we'll never get back. But at the same time, if we're so defensive as a community, um, it, I, it also might just stunt our growth even more. And I know people are going to disagree with me on this, uh, but that's my personal two cents from it. But either way, it was an eye-opening process, and I, I'm glad we have something like it rather than nothing at all uh, at the same time. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of in the middle on it. There's the good and there's the bad. Yeah, and I think we did make some notes, and you and I can probably do a better job at some point of compiling up yeah. some of that because I think, like you're saying, is there's sort of a couple of suggestions. Like there's this idea of the chip process, and there's some ideas of how to do it, but I and you and I, we looked and we found like one or two articles that had a pretty, you know, breakdown that we could see of if you want to propose an idea, which we did, then this is how you do it. So we did exactly that. And what it yep. said, first point was start discussing it in the community. So yep. we did, we put that out there. And then I, like you're saying, there's pros and cons. On one hand, I'm glad that the process is not uh, just easy i understand it's supposed to be slow and methodical and you've got to do things step by step and you have to get large buy-in and i understand all that that's good and that was vindicated i guess uh, in our experience so far but 
Oh, there he is. <laughs> Sorry. Alex drops out. Um, yeah, you know, that was vindicated, right? So that was good. But on the other hand, I was super disappointed that in some forums, some parts of the community, we got a huge lashback just for proposing the idea. It was right. not even like, let's discuss the merits of this. I disagree with it on a good or bad basis. Even just the fact that we said, can we talk about having the upgrade on saturday and people said no we're never changing it may 15th it's the default it's perfect don't touch it like it just that was part of the response and so what we had to put a lot of effort into and why sort of some of our momentum slowed down on it was we had to not only win the battle of convincing people that saturday would be a better day and yes we probably didn't have the best evidence and the best and you know we said that's what we said we said we don't have all the evidence we don't have a solid case here but yeah. we're just floating the idea and trying it like you said it's going to take a while so we're going to get people receptive to it as we work on a more convincing case you know with stats or examples or research or whatever but we didn't even really get to that phase because even though we talked to quite a few people who were more in the promotional and marketing side of the community, they said, this is no brainer. This is a slam dunk. Like we should yeah. definitely at least talk about this. But then some people more in the engineering side were like, no, we can't do this. I want to have, you know, my weekend. I don't want to disrupt my weekend. And it's like, well, uh, the 15th can already fall on a Saturday. It, it, Nobody exactly. has and ever when, said anything about that until we had brought it up. Even when we right? proposed, yeah, even when we proposed, okay, what if we did like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and then we got into like some like Nordic calendar mythology or something as to what's the best weekday to do it, and there's like, oh, well, we shouldn't change it. It was like, okay, but you said you don't want it on a weekend, but now you do want it on a weekend sometimes. Uh, it's, there's not much. It's just, it's just exactly as you said. It's just frustrating when just proposing the idea where we can't even discuss it is. And I have firsthand evidence and. This, if we decide to at one point do a revised chip, um, I have the evidence of the 2021 live stream I did with Chibi uh, for the Smart BCH live stream versus the one that we did, the next one, and the 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 live stream count was just astonishingly different. The 2021 one was so much more active because it fell on a weekend. Everyone could show up, and there's still some people who are like, "Oh, this is going to be very late my time. It's going to—I think it was on a Sunday, and it's going to go to like Monday time. So, not everyone it works for, it, but it works for a lot more. But then when we did ours, we still had great engagement. Don't get me wrong; we had great engagement. But the the amount of comments that I, I got, uh, I'm sure that we also discussed, is that you know it sucks that it's um it's we we can't experience that this moment and. I get some say, oh, it's a technical change. It shouldn't change the network much. But at the same time, we had multiple nodes in the past fall out of consensus. BCHD is still being worked on, and, and we've lost certain payment services like the pay button and otherwise that we're using it. So, no, it's it's not something that's supposed to, that, that goes off without a hitch, right? It's something that we should get excitement behind. And, especially, and that's the second point, right? I, I personally believe, and a lot of promoters are more promotional, uh, people think, and even the parts of the community uh, think that, that it's um, it's a great like rallying moment for the community. It's like we just did another successful upgrade. This is another momentous like time for for our community and this project. Um, and I, listen, I can fully understand the other side of the spectrum. So yes, having it on a weekend is is not. It's not practicable for a lot of people, but it's going to happen anyways. And if we could standardize a day of the week, I think that's worthy of the discussion rather than shut down for even just suggesting we talk about the idea in the first place, which, as you said, is, is pretty much exactly what happened. Not from everyone, I'm going to be very clear, but there, we, we did get a lot of that feedback, if you'll call it that. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's like you say as well, too, is that this was also partly a little bit experimental like i said in that it was a a cultural or a conceptual change right. rather yep. than a technical change right so that that was where i was also a bit caught off guard because i thought on one hand this should at least be an easier chip than ever because nobody right. has to do a big writing a big you know uh 
upgrade patch. Nobody needs to bug test it. Nothing like right. that, right? There's no code that needs to be written. All we do is instead of just setting the uh, upgrade block, you know, on Wednesday, we just set it on Saturday. Like that's that's the, the trivial change, right? So I thought at least in that sense, it should probably not be controversial. In fact, we, you know, we're not saving work exactly because there's more work than doing nothing. But on the other hand, it's very uncontroversial technically. The only controversy could be cultural, but the idea is we need you know, the community needs to be able to progress and agree on things at a cultural right. level as well as a technical level. And obviously we've been able to make change, for instance, like with the Jessica NFTs, who knows where culture comes from? You know, these things organically come up, they catch on, people like it and they proliferate it, right? And maybe that will have to be forever after the only way that cultural changes can be implemented. But I like the idea that if this chip right. process is so good for decentralized governance, it shouldn't become the province of engineers that are just in the weeds every day. And it's just what are the most engineering technical concerns. And I think we got a lot of feedback where people saying, I don't want to work on, you know, a Saturday, much aside from the fact that they already could be working on a Saturday if it fell on that day today. But is that to communicate with engineers? And I know I am an engineer that yeah sure that's not ideal but it's known well in advance so you could plan around that you could have tuesday and wednesday off that week and then have your saturday like for one weekend a year is at the end of the world and also you've got to think of the holistic benefits there's a reason that a company is not an engineering department and nothing else it's because like there, the there's a reason the, 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 like there's a reason the super bowl's on a sunday those yes. people are working that are running the super bowl they're all working yes and they might get the next day off or the day after, however many days it takes to, 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 to break down all the equipment or whatever else. But yeah, there's a small group of people that are doing a lot of work for a once in a year event. I, and I'm not, I, I'll, to give the context, I, again, I just want to, in case, because I'm sure we're, there's going to be some comment about this, but I, I I gave up every weekend of my life. I've not had, I've had a total of two vacation days in the last two and a half years at my job. I work 100, 120 hours a week. So that's like 16 hours a day, including weekends. I work a lot. I understand what it is to give up a weekend because I don't have any weekends. I don't have a semblance of free time. I, if I go out with anyone, if I get an email or a call, I have to take it. I don't have really that choice. I can't just ignore it or I can't put it off till the next like work day. Uh, I, I got to do it. Um, and that's not for everyone. And no one should, ha not everyone should have to live like that. That's not the point at all. But, you know, I think it should at least be open for a, a discussion where it's, it's not only, I, I understand it's the devs that are going to be doing this. And a point was made, which is a very valid point that not all the apps always need to be upgraded on the same day. Right, I fully get that, um, and that was a great counterpoint. But at the same, and, and also for the ones that do, then you know who else are you making in other communities? For instance, uh, another great point was like exchanges, like a Coinbase, right? Uh, if they have to upgrade their node, um, okay, that's a great point. Now you're going to force them to do it on a weekend. What issues could that cause? That's a great point. Um, but at the same time, they're already going to have to do it when it falls on a weekend anyways. Uh, and they're prepping for this. And it's not like the, the entire company is off. The, the technical teams are working around the clock, around the globe. So I I, I don't know. Maybe I've rambled on a bit. But that that's just my two cents. It's, it's, there's no malice towards anyone on my part. It's just, you know, it'd be nice to, as exactly as you said, where it's not just an engineer type thing. Um, it's a whole community consensus. And yes, consensus is never going to be 100%. I mean, even this most recent upgrade doesn't have 100% like approval. It's like 99%, 95%. It's enough. And I get it. And you're going to make, you can never make, as Steve Jobs said, you can never make everyone happy all the time, something like that. But you got to sometimes make tough decisions. And, but that also doesn't mean shutting them down at the same time without hearing them out. And so it's really, it's like, there's, there's, there's both sides of the coin to this. And it's, it's, I don't know. I may have gone on too much, but, but I, it's I important. Just to see more. Yeah. It's important for us to, to start this conversation now, I think, right. because the, the BIP process 
the Bitcoin, the BTC process, the historic one pre-split and everything, that's like so heavily dominated by engineers. And it, right. it was, and that's fine because Bitcoin in its early days was more of a technical project. That's, and it always will be obviously a technical project. But as time goes on, then after all the splits and everything, the BCH community realized we needed some sort of more social consensus where people can have inputs on things that it's not just the engineers in some, right. you know, in Bitcoin court cooking up the dictate for the plebs, right? So we've got that process and that seems to be working. But then you and I tried to come in and give some input into this process from a non-engineering perspective and immediately got a ton of lashback as well. The engineers don't want this, right? So right, I think, exactly. And in the future, maybe somebody will come in, you know, God forbid, but maybe somebody <laughs> will have a legal, a legal point or a, you know, I don't know, a marketing, we tried to do a marketing point or maybe another one. Maybe there'll be a branding point. Maybe everybody say we need to rebrand the green to you know, red or something like, I, I don't know what it's going to be. But the point is over time as the community grows and more of the world is relying on BCH, it's going to come down to more than just the exact, you know, protocol bits and bytes, right? So for uh, the whole point of doing this segment, I think it was really just to get the rest of the community thinking right. about a bit more about the chip process. And for anybody who did have an initial negative reaction to maybe just consider a little bit if they could have been more open-minded to at least the discussion we're not saying you had right. to agree with us right. but at least not uh stamp us down for trying to consider a new idea and then also to think maybe in future like you said it sets a bad precedent if somebody yep. tries to make a proposal and gets immediately like screamed down as like we can never discuss this then that doesn't really set the tone that the whole chip process was supposed to create that it's a decentralized thing and anybody can come in and discuss it, right? I have some it, questions. It, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Okay. So first off, for both like our audience and you guys, I don't give a damn what day the upgrades are. <laughs> I have no like if I if, even if I'm working, I'll probably pull up some kind of chat to be involved. Um but I'm under the impression that most nodes get upgraded in advance, right? Like I'm pretty sure BCHN right. already has their version out for the Abla upgrade. So I'm running it right here. <laughs> yeah. So I am not convinced about people losing their weekends uh, mm -hmm. unless there's like a patch, like an emergency patch that needs to go out. But that's what the chip net's for, right? Like we should. Right. That's know what those the six months of testing's that. for. <laughs> No, but people do still need to monitor it, right? Even if the software is, that's just software engineering. And no matter how well tested it is, how ahead of time you've got it and so forth, there's always going to be the big red button moment, or in this case, it's a clock, you know, as it ticks over the line and it's live and, you know, the node teams are sitting there being like, shit, has it broken? No, 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 no. It's all I mean, good. A great and example like, of this <laughs> is look at every, it, just look at Apple. Vision Pro, right? Before I even got it on launch day, it had it went from 1.00 to 1.01 to 1.02. Was the up up, up on upgrade day is 1.0.2. So I get it. Like there's gonna be like these last minute changes that sometimes need to happen. Sometimes uh, I and I, they've been testing this thing for fucking like seven years, however long it's been. They've been working on this project, right? Um, and just, even with ever, and it still didn't actually work perfectly. I mean, iMessage didn't work for me until I went to the developer beta on it because um, uh, because I had contact key verification turned on where it does some like encryption check between you and your contact, whatever. And so even at launch day, it wasn't perfect. So I, yeah, I, I get why it needs to be monitored, but yeah, also the majority of, uh, the majority of node operators aren't, shouldn't experience some mission critical bug that makes it not work. It should be more, I would hope like stability things, right? Yeah, okay. So Whereas you get like, you know, it's like yeah. if there were an emergency patch that needed to go through, yep. then those emergency patches aren't getting chips. Uh, that's true. The <laughs> yes. upgrade yeah, should be that's fully sorted point. out beforehand. That's a great point. <laughs> yes. But I mean, and I think bringing up like last minute patches and stuff is kind of 
beside the point because i think if we're getting to that then the process has already failed people right. will say and they'll be right like look we yeah. can't disrupt bitcoin cash it needs to be up a hundred percent of the time it needs to always be reliable we can't just suddenly be like oh sorry guys you know we switched not that anybody even could right but like solana like it's down for six hours sorry guys like your payment network is just even fucking BSV. wrecked remember to invalidate like, this block <laughs> exactly like, oh so obviously we can't be getting into that right I have a point on this too, uh, because not that long ago, there was a discussion on the Bitcoin Cash re Research website about upgrades. I think it was Tom that might have mentioned something about not always like having like uh, require node updates, where you could run the old node and everything would sync just fine. Uh, and I made a comment about uh, how you know complete theory. Right, and this is coming from a non like non and non like super Bitcoin engineer. Right, uh, it's like okay, well, what if we decide to have some kind of schedule where every one once every two years it's a hard fork, one every two years it's a soft fork, and no one liked the fork term, and I got so much well, not everyone, but some people just hated the term fork. Don't use the term; it doesn't mean what it means or whatever. Even though one is it's. it's it's, it shouldn't be a matter of who cares about what words use. It just means one doesn't break the implementation like Abla. You don't need to upgrade to stay in sync with the chain. You should upgrade, but you're not going to lose. You're not going to fall out of sync if you don't upgrade this time, right? Versus, for instance, the uh, the smart BCH upgrade, right, or the upgrades that came at that time that you would fall out of sync, or the ca uh, I don't know about cash tokens, maybe cash tokens too, um, which is what caused like the BCHD node. To fall offline or to, to to fall out of sync and not work right and just immediate blowback just on the just forgetting anything else just the word itself is like guys come on it's just just the idea we don't have to get caught up on all the words we don't have to attack people say you're attacking the community or some like psyop or whatever else let's just have a cohesive conversation guys come on and it's not it's not against anyone anywhere it's just it's just furthering the points like let's just have open discussions we don't need to be so defensive for everything especially when someone's been in the community for since since day one right for like you and me we've we've been in since the beginning right we're not i think we're the furthest people away from trying to destroy this community right we're the ones actually promoting you more than probably most people right it's actually promoting this project uh, and for people to suggest that, you know, could going so far as, and this is not, this is almost no one, but there were suggestions that were like infiltrators or attackers to the community. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Nobody, nobody was really saying that. I don't think, but it, it was, you know, overall I am just, and here's emerging reason saying in the chat, like you don't do an upgrade as a soft fork just in case there are bugs. And I said, look, it's about what the idea is about keeping the node operators like if you're just not paying attention, you know, for six months, you're not suddenly off the network and whatever. Right. But this is just kind of proving the point, which is it's not even about the specifics of the thing. We can always negotiate and discuss about the specifics of the thing. Is this a good idea? Yes or no? The point is just that we can have a discussion in the first place. And I think the community is not doing the best job of of upholding that ideal and i think yeah hopefully at least we can have some more discussion going forward and people because i the next person who proposes a chip i want them to feel like they can right. float an idea and have people think let's consider it rather than no 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 you can't do that blah blah blah, blah. especially as more and more as the community grows this is going to be a bigger and bigger issue some guy is going to yep. come in from eth who's got yep. some idea which might be good or it might be terrible. But what it is going to be is something that no one's expecting. And if he says something that nobody's expecting or that people's existing mindset can't handle, and then he immediately gets told, no, fuck off, we don't do that here, blah, 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 then we have just killed the golden goose. You know, we've killed the innovators and yep. people being involved, you know? Um, and, and listen, I, just, I also just to clarify my position here, I say nothing I say because I'm trying to attack anyone or anything. It's simply because I love this community. I want to see this project su succeed, and uh, you, by keeping quiet on uh, anyone's opinions or mindsets, as long as no, no one's attacking anyone, right? Um, it, it's uh, it's important to keep an open like line of communication and to say what one's thoughts are. 
Uh, I only say this because I want the best for everyone. And maybe I'm completely all wrong with everything I've said. Maybe there's legitimate reasons why every single point I've made, I don't see them, but uh, is uh, is completely incorrect. And I'm, I'm fine with that. But I, I don't want to be in a... It, I don't think uh, a community should exactly said just you know have it immediately attacked at least at least be open to the discussion even if the idea in the end is not going to work or you don't agree with the idea from day one at least say that you know i don't think this is a good idea for this reason this reason that reason uh rather than oh this is terrible you shouldn't have done this or it's just a waste of time and space it's, that's 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 the only thing I, i'm trying to say here and i think it's a very valuable lesson that we had learned in the chip uh, process but it's also an important one as we both said right it's um it's important to some extent to have some barrier to this as well uh and not like not like a barrier to entry but a barrier to finalization i guess right because you do want consensus so we've had a lot of splits in the past which have been caused by you know mal actors coming in and trying to stir up something so i, I get both sides of it but yeah i think it's important to at least have the exactly as you said what if we have this ethereum dev that comes in or even god forbid what if we had someone from the old btc dev group come in and they have some idea maybe we don't like what they were part of in the past but may, maybe just maybe they have an idea that could actually work uh or that could grow into something again like cash tokens that was an idea that was the original idea was proposed so many years ago, and it wasn't the initial idea that ended up being cash tokens, but that started the conversation. And as long as we don't kill it, and I get it, cash tokens wasn't killed. Someone's going to make the point that cash tokens and everything else was argued for years and how to get it right because people fought for it. And I completely get it. Um, but at the same time, doesn't mean that we can't maybe do a little bit better as a community. Exactly. Exactly. Emergen saying like, look, you have to create a chip and then you have to advocate it over a long time, add a mm -hmm. lot of evidence, make sure it's good. We're not saying any, of course, yes, yep. all of that. But there's two big things that we can really improve about this process. The first is that that can be made clear ahead of time. You and I tried to make a chip and like you said, five people were like, this is not the right way to do it. We were like, where is the right way to do it? And they were like, there is no document that specifies the right way to do it. And we're like, well, fucking great guys. Like, if, if you, you can't tell us we're doing it the wrong way and then also say there's no way that explains how to do it. Like, that's just nonsense. So firstly, they, and we're going to hopefully contribute to that by writing up, well, this conversation is already a step forward in that process. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can also document some of our experience and help to make things easier for the next person. And then the second thing is just to not react to an idea instantly as this should never be discussed. You might even want to say this is a bad idea, but you can say this is a bad idea, but right. I'm happy to discuss it with you. That would have been a titanic tone shift from what we what we experienced, I think. And exactly. Yeah. Okay, that's enough about that. But yeah. uh, I think you know that that was a good discussion that we needed to have. I'm glad we could have you on to to talk about that. Absolutely. Okay. Question of I'm the week. I'm going to be right back in 20 seconds. Just need. Just, Right yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right we got the waiting uh the elevator elevator music okay on the background <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need a tv in the background all right so it. sorry i i i left the stove on uh, yes <laughs> okay whoa on. all right yes <laughs> good thing that's it, good it thing reminded me fun. it's like you know i have i have a soup on the stove I don't remember if I turned it off or not. Let me make sure. <laughs> don't burn the house down. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's I almost did that one as a kid. Not, not, not a fun experience. More of the story. Uh, ignitable fl fluids don't use inside the house. Outside, yes. Inside, no. <laughs> All right. Yes. Good, good, good knowledge. Good knowledge. Okay. <laughs> Question of the week segment is back. I asked on Twitter and uh, Telegram and a couple of other places this week for new questions of the week. We've got a lot of good responses, actually. So we've got a big uh, stockpile for the coming episodes. But this week's episode comes from the first one to jump in on it, which is the BCH gurus. And they asked, mirror, mirror on the wall, what's the best cash token project of them all? So... Obviously, a bit of a leading question here coming from the BCH gurus, but 
it is a, a valid uh valid question and one i'd really like to get an answer to there's a significant amount of contenders actually you might be surprised not only obviously bch guru but it's also cauldron and tap swap you've got the nft projects big cats ninjas the bliss jessica's you've got the meme coins like leet and doge cash you've got the wallets cash and i zap it electron cash petaka you've got tooling like cash token studio or mainnet you've got even the nodes themselves i realized somebody could say the best you know cash token project was bchn or was verde because they had a really good implementation and without that uh you wouldn't have any of them uh BC, you know cheap lightnings in the chat saying the best thing is hey, 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 hey. he made a meme token that was just ah so that's also being not that's not going to win but uh, that's also <laughs> technically technically a contender before i give my thoughts alex do you have like firstly what what makes the best cash uh tokens project because you'll have to give some sort of criteria and then why what what do you think oh so now there's a wide scale there because best is widely defined by a great many people <laughs> um for me whatever in the end ends up being it's is this so broad but whatever ends up being the most useful the most used and um no, really, yeah. The most useful and the most used, uh, uh, honestly, project is probably, and, and at the same time, also, whatever gets the most traction and hype, which I guess is the same thing as being used, um, because it's it's gonna now, you know, we're so, as much as it pains me to say, we're we're very much past this peer to peer network part where we could just use it in daily commerce and that would be enough. Nowadays, it's not enough. We have Apple Pay. We have all this other crap that just makes it so easy. Why do people use crypto? So now, all right, now we need to find the next game-changing feature. And cash tokens is what's going to get us there, I think. Um, so it's really what, well, frankly, the project, one of the projects that excites me so much uh, because of the potential, the possibilities is prediction markets with BCH Guru. I'm so excited. Uh, once that would open up to where I think reasonably you could probably create a market for anything that would be incredible if because there's already sites that but you have to use kyc and otherwise uh where you can predict on who's going to win the next sports game who's going to win the presidential election in the united states who's going to whatever else if you could do that all on chain no kyc needed that's an incredible use case now it's then it's also a matter of how can we get more people to use it maybe i've gone a little ahead of the question here but what makes the most the 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 best project? I mean, whatever makes the people most happy, whatever gets the most use, uh, it, uh, I think. But there's also a wide range of you know. To some people, one project is going to be more useful than another, and and vice versa. So I mean, that's my long-winded answer there. But um, do you have a pick then? Obviously, it is subjective. Well, obviously, the lead token. Lead token. That's your favorite. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> could be. Uh, <laughs> No, I, 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 I have lead. I, of course, I have lead. I want it to do well. Um, no, but I think uh, a favorite token. I don't have a favorite token. Furu is great. I have. I, I used to have the largest liquidity pool until someone decided to dump like 10 B, 20 BCH into it. <laughs> Ten BCH one side, and then the other side is like, oh shit! Now there's only so much more I can throw in before I just like price myself out by just diluting it, everyone else is going to withdraw. Um, but Fur is great because it, it, that's what works on the prediction markets. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of cool projects. I would like to see more. I'd very much like to see more. I'm very curious where Cash Ninjas will go. I'm very happy to see Reapers come back. Reapers is cool. I Okay, going back on Smart BCH, uh, the one thing that I spent money on just to support the community uh, with no expectation was the Reapers NFTs because I thought they were cool. I was like, oh, I'm going to support a dev. I'm going to spend some money here. No, not a lot, but a little bit. So it's cool to see them back. But there's a lot of cool projects. And I know that um, the the, um, the Cash Ninjas guys have a lot of cool plans for the future. Unfortunately, they're not close to the 5,000 minted, but I think they're, they might be, be moving forward anyways. But I don't know. There, there's a lot of really cool projects, be it just uh, fungible tokens or non-fungible tokens. So, you know, uh, there, 
there's a lot of cool projects. I'm not gonna let you I waffle. Like you gotta pick waffle. one. You gotta pick one. What's the best? Budge. All right. Um, I'm gonna give you two, but with different criteria. What I would like best the most is one. right there's now. One thing is the best. What I like the most right now is Cash Ninjas because they're really fun. Okay, Cash but Ninjas. But what right, I like the most in, for the future is Furu. <laughs> Okay, the, not, don't tell me about some future in the future. The future's not here yet. Cash Ninjas. Okay, that's Alex's answer. My answer sure. <laughs> is sim similarly, I want to say that best is obviously subjective and it depends quite a lot on your criteria. So I have to say when I saw this question, I immediately thought, well, there's a variety of metrics, you know. So I think gurus have done amazing on the visual assets. I've been super impressed. The quality of the NFTs, the yeah. videos that they did, the website is all really slick. So they're crushing it on that. Like Cauldron, I tried out this week a bit more and technically it's very, very slick as well too. So I'm I'm impressed uh, by that. TapSwap has a special place in my heart because we've used it for the Jessica's NFTs sale <laughs> as well. So I'm loving that. But honestly, when I saw this question, my first instinct, and I think my answer, even after I considered it, was cash and eyes. I have to say, Matthew Hirkins has just done a tremendous job, and the cash tokens ecosystem that we have today is largely just a result of that yep. work. He started with a, you know, um, just the most bare bones basic. <laughs> Alex, you're distracting me so much with your typing there. Uh, he distracted oh, me. Sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he, he made the most bare bones thing to start with, and it's just got better and better. And I've been using Cash and Eyes and a lot of the other, pro like the gurus in their tutorial videos, they show Cash and Eyes. In the Tap Swap tutorial video that I did, it's Cash and Eyes. Cash and Eyes is just tying the whole ecosystem together and really making cash tokens usable even to the hardcore advanced users that we're at at this stage so in my opinion right now the best cash tokens project it's cash nines by matthew hirkins ray uses bitcoin cash says in the chat cash ninjas and jessica's are my favorite so there you go i'm glad that jessica oh, is getting, shoot. getting you know up. you know fine you know i do have Jessica is my favorite project in this moment because it's necessary <laughs> to get to the conference. I totally, I didn't consider that. I, I revised my answer for the third time. <laughs> okay. All right, Jet, what's your favorite? Or the best? That's tough. That is really tough. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the Jessica ones. I, that's the most recent one that oh, I've man. gotten involved with and I get to use it. So it's a double whammy. Jessica's nice. project. <laughs> Okay, love it. Love Although it. there you go, I will say, like the the whole guru ecosystem is awesome. They're yeah. a runner up for me. They've they've definitely delivered on their early promises so far as well, and I'm super excited going forward. So thank you for the question as well too. There you go, great great contribution as well. Active engagement in the ecosystem is another big plus uh, for them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, sorry you couldn't win, but just truly in my heart, it's cash and eyes. Uh, okay, custody base is up next. We had some news just I think yesterday maybe from Coinbase. Yeah. Uh, somebody started calling out Coinbase on Twitter, saying, "Why can't I accept payments? You know, using my Coinbase uh, plugin or whatever they were doing in Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or Doge." or Litecoin, and they found uh, a part of the Coinbase uh, FAQ that said, what happened to Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Doge, and Litecoin payments? You can still accept Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Doge, and Litecoin payments as long as your customer has a Coinbase.com account. These currencies are no longer supported for payment from self-custody wallets or third-party exchanges. Additionally, your customers will now be able to make a payment with any cryptocurrency in their Coinbase.com and account so this was not really that widely publicized by coinbase who now are having to deal with the pr blowback but they've essentially they've got this weird cope where they're like it's still non-custodial if you pay with an evm chain but for the uh utxo chains like bch bdc 
LDC and Doge. Now that's it. You can't pay non-custodially. You have to have an account in their ecosystem. And of course, there's been tons of lashback, not only because everybody who likes those chains is like, you're selling out on the whole values of crypto here to just become the new PayPal, right? It's just a reskinned uh, PayPal at this point, but it's their solution, quote unquote, for making instant cheap crypto payments. You know, they had uh, those ads that they were running recently, like it's time to update the financial system and crypto is doing it faster and better and slicker. And yet they've just sold out the whole mission. And this is clearly yeah. just the next step in regulated bullshit finance that is just going to be the same banks with a different label on them, right? If you can't do non-custodial payments through their payment processor with the most major payment used cryptos, what are we even doing here? So this is just a I mean, they are the most used. This. Let me look at look yeah. at bitpay.com slash stats. Those are the four top chains used for commerce. You're just saying no. And they say and Brian Armstrong even had to respond to this because it blew up so much. And I had a lot of respects for him in the past, and a lot of it eroded away today or yesterday, I guess. When he's like, Yeah, everything's gonna be on L2s in the future, but that's how we see it. It's like at one point, he's correct about BTC being a failure. Um, but at the same time, it's like, what are you talking about? BCH, LTC, Doge, they all work just fine. And they're used more than BTC together uh, in, in payments and commerce. But this, this is not when it started. I noticed this. This started almost a year ago when Coinbase Commerce removed their self-custodial option. Because they used to be one of the few that would allow you to, okay, you don't have to connect your Coinbase account to use commerce. You can integrate into Shopify and you can have it go to your own, basically your own wallets, right? For all these different currencies. And then I started noticing a, a little less than a year ago, it's like, wait a minute, I can't pay. I can't buy my tongue jerky anymore. I can't buy my body armor anymore. I can't buy whatever else through these Coinbase commerce things. It kept giving me errors and I had no idea why support had no idea why. Um, and then I eventually got an email back. I pushed enough that Coinbase emailed me back with a whole long explanation about how they killed that feature. And now all custom, all, all merchants need to create a Coinbase account and need to go everything through custody with KYC. And that was the first moment. It was like, shoot, they just destroyed what was the big, one of the biggest things for adoption because BidPay sucks. Uh, it's great, but it sucks in that... For merchant for it to be usable to merchants, I think they have to have a thousand dollars a fiat a fiat equivalent before they can withdraw it to their own wallets. You can't do if you have a hundred bucks to BCH. Nope, not enough. You can't withdraw it, which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but then at least BitPay, you know, is widely accepted. You can go to AMC Theater and you can you can spend it. That's how I spend my BCH. Um, but yeah, this is an attack long coming. And I didn't get confirmation until like two weeks ago from support about this, the self-custody actually being killed because they never mentioned anyone on their site. The self-custody option still shows up on their site, even though they don't offer it. They killed it. And now, yeah, they do this. It's like, screw everyone. We're going to L2s uh, unless if you yeah, have a Coinbase account. It's like, it's the most ridiculous thing. I, I can't imagine how much money they spent on this. They even had their... Uh, Product lead for Coinbase Commerce, Laura Lauren Dowling, that um, posted a whole thread about why this was important and all the work and time that was went into this uh, project to make it all like upgraded, so they so call it. I'm like, uh, it's it's a sunk cost now, but like, what even prompted this to like spend all this money to develop an EVM platform for payments that's not even used? I just I don't know. I'm, I'm ranting at this point, but it's just so frustrating. I call this, I told her, it's like, you're either lying or you're just a, a delusional. Uh, and I really hope they're delusional because then at least they don't have ill will. But my gosh, it's just, this is a very sad and pathetic day uh, for uh, adoption and, and everything. Yeah. And I think when it comes to they're saying like, oh, now you can pay with any co coin in your coinbase.com account. But it's like, so what? I don't give a shit if you can pay with your 10,000 random coins that they've got listed on there in a custodial way. Why is that good for anyone? 
no, it's just that they're trying to become the next bank, the next crypto custodian, which is just regulated and run by all the same people who run the fucking banks. They'll be the ones who'll just buy out the shares in Coinbase and the whole P2P cash revolution just dies right there, you know? So I think obviously there was a good lashback, which was good to see, but uh, from this show's point of view, we just really need a highlight to everyone yet because now it's even worse. God knows how many times have we had to just try and correct the record on the whole BTC thing. They've stolen the whole branding and wrecked it, right? Now you've got Coinbase who were like the crypto guys that were disrupting it. Now we're going to have to be like, yeah, but they're just part of the traditional financial system, even though they're constantly saying they're the crypto guy. Like the real crypto people and the fake crypto people were just being flooded with them uh, constantly. And to me, this just reinforced yet again my stance on this show for the longest time that BCH maximalism is that we're just going to have to do it ourselves. We have to build our own wallets in the BCH community that support BCH and work with BCH stuff because at the end of the day, anything that is remotely unaligned or multi-coin or blah, 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 sooner or later, they just follow, they get onto some other incentives that aren't making Bitcoin Cash the global reserve currency. So even though it, you know it's the hard work that we've got to do ourselves to make our own point of sale solutions, our own merchant networks, which we support ourselves within the community and our own wallets and our own token ecosystem and everything even though that's like the harder way to do it in the short run it's the shortcut in the long run because all these other like coins like litecoin or whatever that so many people are kind of like using these coin based services and so forth then they just get caught up in this and that's like that's it you're done now they're back to square one they're either straight into the custodians or they're going to have to start figuring out something else whereas we can just dodge all of that if we just have our own peer-to-peer economy because if you try and pull this kind of bullet like with the bitcoin.com well you know they've uh, yep. been moving yep. in the wrong direction so now the community's just built better solutions right and if they just yeah if coinbase is going in the wrong direction we need to be able to just route around that with our own solutions and just leave the rest of the coins on the titanic that that didn't do that ahead of time you know yep Hundred percent, and you know the sad thing is too. I, this this backlash uh, is gonna is gonna remind me a lot about the two Discord changes recently. First, changing Clyde, and then changing the font and everything else. Um, is but nothing's gonna happen. People are gonna rage. Nothing's gonna happen, and the reason is they don't care. Especially because Coinbase now they don't make any money from this commerce stuff. They they frankly make nothing, and or very little. Now and now they're getting all this money from their ETF custodian fees, which are astronomical. Um, and it maybe it's fair. So astronomical might not be the right word, but they're going to make so much money from that. They don't care. They're not going to listen to any of us. Uh, I'm very glad, as you said, to see the backlash because it still shows that people care about having non-KYC and non-custodial solutions. But it, it's just, it's very unfortunate what was happening. So I I agree with the, what we need. We need to build everything out ourselves. And whether it be one coin or a select multi coin, I'm still not convinced on fully on either part um, because there are certain people and certain communities. For instance, Monero has a great community, I think. Uh, and I'm very happy with that. Now we have, I think, do you know the status of the, uh, the atomic swap? I know that's They're getting dead. closer. I don't think it's out. It's not, not out yet. yet. But like, like that's a great tool that I think absolutely should exist because I think there's a lot of similarities between our communities. Granted, I think you can do pretty much everything on BCH you can do on Monero. Uh, and yes, Monero is fully private, but I still am not convinced of the full audibility of it. If you can't see the entire transaction history uh, easily, whereas BCH is is private with Cash Fusion, you can go to these guys. Uh, you can go to what is it like the um, the blockchain like. Um, uh, analytic firms, I forgot what it's called, uh, where they actually chain dive into it. A, a chain analysis hour. guys, yep, to see if they can find stuff and cash tokens hides it. I mean, I think Roger even said that cash recently. Fusion. What did I say? Cash tokens. Oh, cash fusion. <laughs> cash fusion. Sorry, yeah, thank you. Um, is, is I think it's more than enough. And Frank, and I'm really excited that uh, 
for if we get back to RPA as well, reasonable payment addresses would be the, the next and I think the greatest step. So I agree in that I don't think any community has anything over us. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's other communities that have alignment. So I'm, I'm in like that gray area there. But regardless, I fully agree that we need to build out our own stuff. Uh, well, because, on. yeah, exactly. There's still one issue with all of that, right? And I'm kind of curious yeah. about what in the hell has happened at Coinbase. Because, so uh, it seems like they are either having their hand forced or they're being like proactively conservative when regulations come. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to believe that it's really their hand being forced. Um, but the big issue that I see is even with all the atomic swaps, I don't think crypto to crypto is a problem. It's the fiat on and off ramps. Yeah. Um, and even <clears throat> I've been in the space since late 2016. I now don't have any way aside from like knowing someone already in the space and being able to transfer through there or like earning it somehow or something some some kind of niche i have to put extra work in <laughs> there's no way for me to just buy bitcoin cash uh kyc free and it is significantly harder now for me to use bch uh without also doing a whole kyc process and i'm kind of nervous like the grips are tightening uh, mm -hmm. And I do, I think our community is really good at being able to respond to these things, but I think the bottleneck will always be the legacy system. And I don't think we have a solution to fiat on and off ramps. Even local Bitcoin uh, in all of its various forms have gotten shut down. So yeah. what, what, what in the hell are we going to do? I mean, there is the Zap of peer to peer, which has seen use and it has a great variety of things, but at the same time, it's still locked to these old rails, be it PayPal, a bank transfer. God forbid on PayPal in the U.S., say anything more than $600 automatically reported to the IRS. Uh, or bank transfers, they might just shut you down immediately. God, if you try and do an Amazon like gift card or something, your account gets locked because either they think it's fraud or they don't want you doing it. Um, so I... It's a tricky part. Like for me, it's less of an issue because I, I, I will try and exchange from uh, with people that are on other tokens or cryptos or otherwise. And I'll, I'll try and uh, not saying I do this. I'm saying theoretically I do this. I could do this or someone could do this um, is give cash to someone and they sent and then they, they give you they, they send you BCH after they do a swap. Someone could do that. Uh, but for the mass adoption, yeah, it's it's going to be an issue, particularly as I see because miners are going. Most miners uh, typically send immediately most third newly minted coins to exchanges, which then they redeem for cash. And now, who has the coins? Exchanges. And how do those coins go anywhere else? Okay, well, they they don't go to anyone unless they withdraw. But then, yes, you need KYC. You now you're subjected to their limits and other stuff. So yeah, Jet. I mean, I I can completely agree that's a problem and i'm not sure there is a perfect solution for it uh, i mean jeremy what do you think well yeah i don't know that we're gonna have the you know some amazing solution coming up except to keep pushing on with what we're already doing which is basically what you need is you need high levels of education within the community and the bch community is very good at that on average yeah. so yeah. i think we need to maintain that but also just the fact is it's a p2p revolution and that's that just seems like every at every step that's how it's got to go like are people going to get captured in these exchanges and so forth yes but if the bch ecosystem is kicking off so much that the motivation to jump over that wall is high enough that's kind of what we have to get to that point if it has to operate as a parallel system and what is the ultimate peer-to-peer exchange solution it's just it's peer-to-peer -peer network it's literally just people you know somebody who knows somebody or you know somebody and if they want some bch they can talk to you about it directly and that just kind of is the way bitcoin has always gone and even if most people are kind of stuck in the you know legacy financial system which now includes coinbase and binance or, or whoever else then that 
that's not a one-way trip they're taking. As soon as they're into that, then once the legacy financial system starts blowing up, all those problems are going to be, uh, you know, hitting them as well too. So if you're not really on the lifeboat, unless you're on the crypto side of the fence, that provides a lot of incentive for people to figure out a way. And like you're saying, it sucks that it's not a simple, easy solution. Like, how do I get into crypto? Go here, sign up, buy some. It's more like, well, you, you're going to have to take this seriously. You're going to have to get involved in the community. But that might also have a bit of a silver lining, which is that if people do need to be serious about that, then maybe they'll be more active about following what the community is up to, being more involved in the chip process, you know, coming to more events, spreading more education right. themselves, right? I think we're at a point where we're getting to a point where people that are like really heavily um, incentivized and optimistic about the future of a project are going to have to come to these conferences and get as many coins as possible to bring back to their localities. Because when shit hits the fan, those locals are going to be the ones that get the short end of the stick, right? So yeah. That and I was actually I was on a walk uh, with my girlfriend earlier. I think it was last week, and I was just thinking like at some point there are going to like there is a uh, price incentive to go to a conference and just get the coins there yeah. rather than going through the exchanges. It's just that threshold, but I feel like that threshold is getting lower and lower based off of how low they KYC you, right? Theoretically, someone could go to these conferences like the last one and bring a bunch of cash with them and exchange it there where there's not there there's not the same kyc and regulation theoretically someone could do something like that and i think that's a great point is that wait is that the bitcoin.com like mug that has the genesis block on it that you just drank from i have the same one i love it i saw it i had to point it out <laughs> i mean just to yeah wrap on this topic i think yeah, it's really just the we've been saying it the whole time, but it really is the same as it always has been peer to peer electronic cash. And maybe that is the lo long, slow, hard way to do it, but it's the hard way or it's no way, you know? So I think that's just, yeah. I, I don't, I don't like sometimes people say, like, we had local bitcoin.com or we had this or we had that. Why doesn't somebody make that? Well, the, the reason is go and try it yourself and find out. Like there's a reason that these things always, once they get to a certain scale, they end up getting captured into regulations or shut down or wound up in whatever. And so we kind of got to take that signal from the market. It's not that we're doing it wrong. It's just the wrong way to go about it. So I'm not sitting around praying for something like that to come back. I think we need to instead go the opposite direction and be better about education and convincing new people on board because it's also a self uh solving problem like it's a virtuous cycle in the sense that i've onboarded people to bch and you obviously all have as well too and every person that you onboard to bch in a peer-to-peer -peer manner they get it about 50 times faster than people who don't like somebody who comes into crypto what's crypto they go online they sign up on coinbase yep. like they have no idea what's going on but if you have onboarded somebody, then that person starts off understanding this is how it works. Somebody talked to me. Now I can talk to somebody else. I can get them to download a wallet. I can send them the money. Boom. And then if they have any problems or they can come and talk to me, just like if I have any problems, I can go and talk to Jeremy and say, Jeremy, what's going on? You know, yada, yada, I'm out of the loop. Like, where do I find more info or whatever? And like, that's I've kind experienced of the way a we good. Do. I've experienced a good middle ground with that because uh, John Bitcoin Out Loud um, and I, we used to do a, like every month we do a Bitcoin Cash like virtual meetup um, for everyone, anyone like anywhere. But it was targeted towards the New Jersey and Pennsylvania areas of the states. And we kind of had that middle ground where some people had some exposure but weren't so sure. But it wasn't the same like person to person like in person where it's direct where it was like super easy to explain but we kind of got in this middle ground that instead of it being like an immediate grasp it was like after a couple minutes of going through it's like oh this is really cool doing the first transaction digitally where everyone would show like their their qr code on the screen or something um and that's when that's when it snapped uh and it was like oh this is really cool now i i you know, I, I get it. It's not just like a meme coin go up or a hype coin go up or whatever. It's like, oh, there's actually utility to this. Um, so I is like, yeah, the more 
we can do this grassroots stuff, I just like the better because that, that's yeah, that's exactly where people really like understand it and get and you get it. And frankly, just brings me to this last point here is like this. Uh, I think this we have the best chance we've had since probably 2017, 2018 to to get traction right now. Uh, we have the malactors out of the community. We have another hype cycle going, and hopefully, you know, even though I don't really care too much about the price, uh, I do care somewhat, especially for adoption purposes. But I'm hoping that ETFs and everything else, uh, like circumvents, or at least is as a heavier weight than regulation, and we get some pretty good price run ups this year because with the momentum, with what we're doing. Uh, and since we typically move in big jumps uh, as as a, uh, in our price, um, I think we have probably the best chance we've had since 2017, 2018 to actually make a mark and hold and grow that 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 mark um, for for like, just global use of, of BCH. So I'm I'm really I'm really uh, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm I'm very hopeful this time, even with all this crap that we're facing. Even with Coinbase, even with regulation, I'm very hopeful that the, this cycle that we um, have a decent shot uh, at making some progress again. Yeah, and I think the community can set the bar higher for ourselves, and we're doing that in that yep. that branding, just the consistently hammering away on it, real P2P cash, because the more we just hone in on that and everybody's just pushing in the same direction, the, the better it will go and the more it stands out compared to alternatives because people slowly kind of get the message while other things <laughs> fall by the wayside one way or another. Okay, I've got a slide here. Bidenomics, we've got a quick <laughs> Twitter video. <laughs> Speaking of opposition and problems along the way, Jet, let's just play this quick 50-second clip here. Okay, give me a minute. I did not have this loaded up. Oh, shit. Oh, I've lost the link. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I can send it to you if you need. No, I got it. Twitter. Oh, actually, I think Twitter has just locked everything out. I might not be able to show this. Are we going to have the same uh, problem? Let me give it a shot, though. Um, okay. If not, we'll just edit it in. Yeah, that I can do. And put it, or put it in the chat for people. That want. I think it says I can like share a screen with others. I could also try that. Yeah, but I don't know if I can. I actually... Probably won't have the audio. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, hold on, let me see. Interact. Okay, okay, I've got it here. Let me scroll. You stupid. <laughs> I love it. I even technology nowadays can never work just right. <laughs> Oh, uh, we're lucky we so have the technology we do, I think. <laughs> That's true, too. Okay, let me just increase the screen size here. Da, 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 da. Put it right in between you. And transition. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Here we Hold on a second. Okay, new problem. Where in the hell? Uh, audience, can you hear? <coughs> Sorry. Let's try this again. Oh my god. Pause. Full screen. Give me some audio. The Super Bowl Sunday. There we go. If you're anything like me, you like to be surrounded by a snack or two while watching the big game. You know, when buying snacks for the game, you might have noticed one thing. Sports drinks bottles are smaller. A bag of chips has fewer chips, but they're still charging it just as much. And as an ice cream lover, what makes me the most angry is that ice cream cartons have actually shrunk in size, but not in price. I've had enough of what they call shrinkflation. It's a ripoff. Some companies are trying to pull a fast one by shrinking the products little by little and hoping you won't notice. Give me a break. The American public is tired of being played for suckers. I'm calling on companies to put a stop to this. Let's make sure businesses do the right thing now. Okay. Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, don't read. So here we have it yet again. 
<laughs> Here we have it. Just the endless propaganda, right? When the one who's pouring gasoline all throughout the house and lighting the match is like, the house is on fire. Yeah, no shit. You set it on fire. You are constantly churning out more and more fake fucking fiat currency at the Federal Reserve, creating the inflation that everybody is suffering. And what's this propaganda shell game to blame the greedy companies for shrinkflation? Like, obviously, the corporations do have a minor role to play in, but the fact of the matter is they're just responding to the barrage of printed money that is coming out, devaluing the actual dollars. And they don't want to raise their prices because consumers do that and will blame them, even though it's not really their fault. So, like... I mean, just even the fact that you now have the president of the United States, like we're getting there one step at a time, right? It's gone from, it's like the classic, there is no inflation, inflation is transitory, inflation is here to stay, but it's not really a problem. Inflation is a problem, but it's just, it's shrinkflation, it's the evil corporations. Once every excuse and every bit of bullshit is finally you know, faded out from the public's ability to believe it, they'll finally get to the bottom, which is the government is printing too much money and we need to adopt crypto, right? So I just thought this was like just crazy. But even in the comments to this, like everybody's just roasting, you know, Biden for how ridiculous this is. So I'm glad to see that finally we're getting there on the inflation narrative. But of course, the excuses and propaganda will continue until fiat's dying breath, basically, right? Yeah, I mean the problem is all sorts of problems. Like Biden, Trump, no, these they don't have really that much power. And then in the end of the day, other people control them all, so they're just puppets doing what they're told to do. I think Trump might be a little less so, but he's also has the other side of him too. Uh, I I don't like really any politician. Uh, that, that everyone has their own agenda or other people's agendas, and we see this inflation, shrinkflation caused by both the U.S. Uh, Net interest, uh, so net interest expense. So after the interest income on debt we hold from other countries, uh, is great as now is now greater than our national defense budget of over seven hundred billion dollars a year. Seven hundred billion a year. I think that's like fifteen plus percent of the U.S. tax revenue, maybe twenty percent of the U.S. tax revenue. And at the rate we're going, we're over thirty three, thirty four trillion in debt. Um, trillion dollars it's like 130 something percent of the u.s gdp uh at some point we're gonna get to the point where we're printing money just to pay the inflation i'm uh, sorry the interest at which point that that's hyperinflation right there and we're uh and people are like oh inflation's going down because it's only 3.1 percent okay hang on a minute firstly it's above the two percent arbitrary somewhat somewhat arbitrary target that's in place um but at the same time what about the 15% inflation? That still exists. We're still paying more. At the same time, they're reducing the size of the products and everything else. But but they're also doing that, as you said, because it's a response because pe- prices are sticky. Customers don't like to pay more. Um, except look at the price of milk, the price of eggs, the price of meat, the price of anything. It's gone up two, four times in the last four years, at least in the States. It's ridiculous. Um, and it, 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 every Whether it be Biden... Or Trump, if he somehow wins the next election, they're both going to blame the other person. Even though Trump himself and printed basically, or told the Federal Reserve to print seven trillion dollars, seven yeah, seven trillion dollars in order to pay out to people, and it mostly went to corporations and other stuff, anyways, not to the small businesses it was supposed to. And it didn't even fix the problem. The problem was the government got involved, shutting down supply. It wasn't the buy side problem. It was a supply side problem because the government forced them to shut down. And then we, oh, let's give money to everyone. And that's going to fix the problem. And it's just, it's such a load of crap. These, this propaganda, this messaging, always blaming everyone else. It's the cool. One day it's the corporations, the next day it's your political opponents. No, it's you sitting there right now, the fact that we had a Federal Reserve. And you know, the one person that kind of spoke out against it, JFK, when he went around the Federal Reserve and issued those silver dollars uh, that did that weren't going to the Federal Reserve, uh, shortly thereafter, the CIA, uh, sorry, someone had him shot. 
<laughs> and to use yes, the, yes. And to use uh, Putin's analogy, the most recent time, uh, the CIA has no alibi. <laughs> uh, but I'm not. I'm not very clear to uh, the government listening in here. I'm not accusing the CIA or any other organization of doing anything. Simply stating a rumor that goes around that is probably totally untrue. But <laughs> just like inflation, mate. Just like exactly. Oh, inflation doesn't exist. Like inflation. It's greedy corporations and people we need fifty dollar minimum wage. At which point uh, we're gonna have uh, five hundred dollar okay. burgers and yeah, uh, exactly. robots taking the orders. Yeah, it's that's all right. bullshit propaganda, and it's 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 so infuriating because it's just a tax on everyone except the people that have so much money they don't care. It's very unfortunate. You know, do you see people starting to wake up though? Like, I'm so glad that we have the whole history of this podcast. At some point, we're going to be able to do a banger edit of like <laughs> the the propaganda compilation as it just slides with the dates, timestamps as it just slides down year after year after year. You know, every bit of propaganda. It's always the same propaganda. So it's just the government's yep. spending more money and that's fucking everything up, right? Uh, but do I you think, see people, I think people are, responding? Yeah, no, I think people are. Yeah, this this is um, here's the problem. I think people are waking up to this stuff, and I think they're realizing it's bigger than just any one political party. Too, uh, I think people are realizing there's a problem with the system, with inflation and otherwise. But at the same time, what becomes challenging is that there's so much artificial propaganda that is trying to stem both political parties against each other and creates such just like hatred for one another that one, it makes them easy to control. And it's get and I worry that's gonna get them to forget about this inflation thing and be like, oh, who cares about inflation? I need to hate the liberal or I need to hate the conservative. Um, and so I do think people are waking up in this moment, but at the same time, there's so much propaganda going on trying to make both sides hate each other more than ever that it's just, uh, I don't know if it's going to stick. I hope I hope people continue to wake up, but I mean, just every day I, I, I open any kind of social media, uh, it's, especially the last like month, it's been more than ever have I seen both sides trying to trigger the other side with all this, look at these pedophiles or look at all this... Uh, money they're spending and all these like free drugs and both sides of this thing and it's just it's just it's just crazy you know there's a time that you could have disagreements but still be respectful to one another but now it's just such like a, the chip a, a process eh? hatred. yeah i didn't want to say it but <laughs> you said it not me <laughs> uh no, but yeah it's, it's a shame that you know you, nowadays it's so hard to just have a dis this discussion with someone you disagree with Whereas in the past, it, you know, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was better than today. I can tell you 10 years ago, I could a I could absolutely have a discussion with the other side of the aisle. Today, uh, it's like, it, it's so difficult. Yeah, uh, just, and so, yeah, I don't know. I, I think people are waking up, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they don't get caught up in the propagandas and lies and hatred that they're trying to stem between uh, all sides of the political and economic and other spectrums yeah yeah that's it but uh the more the more money they print the more inflation goes up and yep. the more people actually finally start listening about crypto so yeah you're seeing it more and more and more it's just going to keep dominating the news and discussions until people finally get to the root of the issue so uh it's sad that it's going to take so much pain and so many problems before people get it but we're, That's a, we're chugging forward. We're moving in the right direction. At the same time, I just want to say one more thing on this. It's why we had to fight CBDCs as hard as we can right now. Because if if successful, that's going to be the only... I think that's the only way the governments around the globe can uh, say, screw you, inflation doesn't matter. We have full control over your lives. Because now we know everything you're spending and where, and we can tell you when and where you can and can't spend it. Uh, if we don't have that system, governments will lose power as inflation continues. They will lose their power. People will wake up. But that's why we have to fight CBDCs because I think that's the only way that governments have a chance at fighting back against this movement. Uh, That'll be the solution. You're right. They'll say, CBDCs, that will fix inflation. 
of course, that will just bring even worse inflation in the long run. Yep. But they'll present it as the non-inflationary alternative, yep. you know, until they switch on the money printers of that too at some point. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. People just got to be be aware and, and spread the word because uh, awareness is the best defense. Yep. All right. Speaking of people you disagree with, we've had yeah. the COPA trial beginning versus our good friend Craig Wright. So to, there's been 10 days of trial so far, and I believe it can go into April. So there's uh, quite a lot sort of left to come in that regard. I, maybe some of it is deliberations and so forth. I don't know. But there's essentially been, from my understanding of the coverage, although it's hard to always get an objective view, there has just been an avalanche of exposed lies, contradictions, forged documents, exactly what we predicted and would have expected so far at least craig doesn't seem to have pulled any rabbits out of the hat or any last minute arguments or new evidence in fact he submitted several batches of fresh evidence after his third batch was already full of forgeries he then in the middle of the trial submitted a fourth evidence batch of evidence which the judge allowed but then that had even more forgeries in it and he submitted a fifth uh one i don't know whether that was allowed or not but the ongoing you know stream of bullshit was being produced now the uh, highlight of this whole uh falling apart of his story once again it seems to have been on day eight when he was asked to explain what an unsigned integer is which is a sort of basic computer science concept and was unable to do it sort of like asking a mathematician can you explain multiplication and they couldn't do it and then it's like come on mate you're not satoshi right so he has been directly cross-examined by judge melor think there's been so much lies and bullshit you know i don't know what the judge was coming in thinking but i'm sure after 10 days of watching him get destroyed on point after point after point and forgery after forgery after forgery starting to get a bit sick of it and i guess we'll see sort of by the end of court what what comes of all this now the reaction generally has been that the btc side have just said this is all forgeries and lies getting exposed uh, getting exposed craig is getting roasted on the bsv side who obviously have also been following it quite closely there's been a spread of opinions some people seem to be going deeper into the cope with no craig is winning he's refuting everything uh, perfectly etc some of them are kind of like, nah, I don't know how this is going. Maybe it's not working out for us. And some of them seem to be kind of like waking up a bit, like we're getting wrecked. This is not, you know, working for us. There's just so many frauds and forgeries. But that certainly has been far from universal in the BSV reaction uh, there. Kurt Wackett Jr., uh, his reaction in a CoinGeek article we wrote called Here We Go Again, has essentially gave the sentiment of i just want this to be over so you're finally seeing that after years and years of harassing everyone with court cases finally it's like this is not productive and i'm sick of losing <laughs> so maybe some reality is starting to shine on them but uh if the court case goes badly in the end result which is kind of most likely uh maybe bsv will just kind of fall apart who knows What's your take on all of this? So, yeah, here's, I don't, uh, I, I've read transcripts here and there, and uh, I've read both sides of it, and it, frankly, it's just annoying, because all I hear is either BTC maxis or BSV maxis, as you said, and it's annoying both sides. Um, the question I posed to BSV is for a long time, and I'm very, curious to see what the outcome of this case is, particularly because of this, uh, that they never give an answer to. I think I've gotten one out of the hundred times I've asked uh, an answer to one part of the question, which is, if CSW is found not to be Satoshi by the court, do you still support UTXO confiscation? Because you say courts are just, and they'll never answer the question, okay, what courts? Uh, how low level of a court? Who's going to compel or pay the miners or compensate the miners for their time to overwrite stuff? What if you have multi-jurisdiction uh, where a court's in one country but not another, blah, 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 blah. No one has any answers to this. So, oh, dude, you're a criminal. 
because you're asking these questions. Like, no, come on, this is ridiculous. Just, these are sensible questions that you have to be able to answer. You have to have a plan for. Obviously, they don't. They, uh, frankly, the only reason I think they have this is so that in the off chance CSW would somehow get a court to side in favor with them, they can see, see, we got UTXO confiscation on BSV. Now we can implement it on BTC. Now you have to do it. Give me all the BTC Satoshi coins. And that's what he wants. He doesn't care about BSV at all. And I think, frankly, that's what Calvin's probably betting on too. There's no money in BSV. It's in BTC. And I think that's why Calvin's been funding so much. Um, but at, at a high level, it's like, again, no, no one answers the question, okay, what happens if he's not Satoshi by the courts? Uh, no, no one's going to give, no, no one gives the answer. They either stop responding or they call me a criminal for asking such a question. And it's just, it's, it's all bullshit. All we've seen from CSW is perjury after perjury. The only cases he basically wins are ones where his opponent doesn't show up. Like, for instance, the Cobra case for Bitcoin.org. Cobra just, I think Cobra said he was sitting in the courtroom, but he didn't de-anonymize himself. And so he let, uh, so that was summary judgment, but all the BSV was like, oh, he won, he won, he won. Um, so I don't know. It's just, it's it's a load of bullshit. I don't really care who, and it's, we've had count countless times where CSW has been proven wrong or where he's lied. For instance, where he said, oh, I own these keys and then someone signed the own signed a bunch of the keys he claimed to own saying he's a liar and a fraud blah 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 lightnings uh, it's an interesting technology but it's not there yet blah 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 uh, we are all satoshi right that was a great line it was a great way to show him and also recently i heard that supposedly the electrum wallet or whatever that csw used to sign the keys in front of gavin uh was supposedly manipulated uh, and suppose he did that with multiple people. Uh, so I'm curious to see if in the end we'll, that'll come to light in the trial or maybe already, already has. Um, but I, 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 from the end of the day, I think he's a liar and I think BSV is, is just a scam. But I will say about Kurt, I do like the guy personally a lot. I, I've met him in person. He is genuinely a nice guy. But I do think I, I think there's some ulterior motivations to supporting BSV as well. I think there are some genuine ones, but I think there's also some ulterior motives as well. Um, it probably just sunk cost and sunk investment too, and he spent a lot of money on technologies and other stuff uh, that I, I I kind of understand his position. But he's not a bad guy uh, overall, personally. But yeah, I, I I don't know if he's being the most genuine uh, either at the same time. Um, but he did come to a Bitcoin cash meetup and he spent BCH at it when Ryan was, uh, with Ryan, uh, and Ryan, Ryan said that he Florida. didn't, no, no, Ryan came on the show. He said, said he didn't, uh, have any BC, maybe he paid in fiat, I think, but he, so for his meal, he paid in fiat. He paid me in BCH for okay. one drink I oh. bought him. So he, he oh. did pay one thing in BCH. He, and he said he has some BCH and he sent me BCH, but yeah, for his meal, he paid with credit card. And I, I laughed at him. I was like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> this is... Uh, this is you know, completely the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Uh, his other BSV lackeys uh, or whoever else showed up, they also paid all in by car. And I was like, guys, come on. This is this is ridiculous. You're at a BSDH meetup. At least they showed up. But at the same time, it's like, why are you paying by card, guys? And now there's a whole thing like HODL locker and whatever else. Oh, locker coins. So you can't use them. Oh, I actually like HODL locker. But, but anyway, the point, the oh, point okay. is this, <laughs> this trial is coming to a yeah. bit of a... Uh, uh, a bit of a grinding end after it's been so hyped and you know there's I can't wait. just the I mean I for me the most interesting part has been seeing the BSV community's yeah. reaction you know you really can't underestimate like cognitive dissonance and cope really because people will find a new way to explain it away or think they're winning when from everything I can tell like they're just they're just not but there's so then after even after it's over yep. and the court's like you know you're a fraud and we found that and you can't claim to be satoshi otherwise the legal system will just wreck you and that will be the other interesting thing to see in the aftermath of all this after this much lies and bullshit finally i don't know whether he could go to jail or receive some enormous fine or something but it really just seems like hopefully will just be the knockout blow once he's wrecked here, you know. 
I mean, this this is a civil case, so at most, I think he's going to have to reimburse Copa for their legal costs, which I'm sure are astronomical, of where <laughs> yes. he's going to get the money from. I'm not sure, but with Copa, all the experts and all the money they're spending, all the organization back, I'm sure they have expensive lawyers. And I'm sure 2000 bucks an hour is probably the minimum. And the years of preparation... Good luck funding this uh, this final payday. But no, exactly. Like it's like the more the trial goes on, the more they're like, "Oh, he's proving himself. He's proving himself." It's just such delusion when it's really not that like one sided in court. Um, that's like, yeah, okay, these guys these guys are coping hard. And yeah, as you said too, some guys are saying, "Okay, even if he doesn't win, I still support BSV." And then I guess the point. Okay, then that's where I always we ask. We donated okay. him, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's just it's such bullshit. Just keep a storyline, guys. Like I, it's a pathetic. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's gonna fall apart. I think CSW is gonna finally be proven to be a fraud, and then it's not gonna matter because he's gonna sue someone else in some other jurisdiction and he's gonna try again. Yeah, yeah. Bullshit. It's a waste All right. Of time. Well. We got meme of the week here. This one made me laugh. It's one of my favorite meme formats. Actually, it's the Eric Andre meme where he shoots yeah. the guy and then blames somebody else for doing <laughs> what he himself just did. And it's Eric Andre CSW shooting the guy on the couch, also CSW. And then he turns to the camera and says, "Why would everyone I've ever met do this?" And that's just sums it up right there. It's the most self-inflicted wound but at every point the frauds and lies and whatever becomes uh blamed onto someone else so there you have it uh anyway glad to see that all coming out in court pretty much as expected but uh we'll cover it on the show once there's some kind of result from it all too okay message to the community what does the bch community need to hear Frankly, I, I, a lot of people, in my opinion, a lot of people are against, uh, seem, or maybe, maybe against not the right word, but aren't super happy or excited about the idea of promotion and media. Um, and uh, even though this might ruffle some feathers, I, I personally think that having hype, having media attention is probably one of the most important things we can do because once someone's exposed to BCH, I think it's incredibly sticky because you can do everything on it. But the problem is we don't get much of that initial exposure. We just have all the bad media from all the maxis. And granted, I think we are changing some minds. And I think there is um, there there is some community sentiment shifting. Uh, but at the same time, it's like anytime we're discussing on the forums, I see a lot of people laughing at BTC maxis, and I'm not I'm not perfect. I sometimes do myself, but I think it. Being uh, a humble winner over an arrogant one, or whatever that that analogy is, um, is uh, is probably the better way to go. Because we can, do, not everyone you can do this with. Some people are just assholes. Uh, pardon my language. Uh, but you know, if we can be, if we can be genuine too in in our conversations, like, and I think on Reddit, we're great. The RBTC is fantastic. When someone comes in, genuinely asking questions, or even being like, "Oh, BTC is obviously the market winner," we get great answers. I think we need to translate that more to Twitter and X as well. So it's it's really just, I think we need more marketing. We need more hype around projects. But at the same time, I think we need to be a little bit more, uh, in order so we don't push people away, just a little bit more open on the Twitter X space, kind of like we are in the RBTC space. Okay. Yeah, good thoughts. Be gracious. That's the best way to win. All right. We've got our supporter appreciation donators uh thank you very much for sending in sats thank you to our patrons ricky hp and digital checo thank you to our sponsor general protocols check out bchbull.com as i mentioned at the start of the show we have a flip starter running now at flipstarter.bitcoincashpodcast.com right now we have 18.79 out of 24 bch so we need a few more bch to get over the line and if you've been listening to the show for a while and you're really enjoying it it would be very helpful it's one of the best things you could do to support the show uh send in some sats you might have to figure it out a little bit it's still not the easiest thing in the world uh flip starter but get the electron cash plug in and 
uh, do it, you'll get a bit more experience with how the BCH community is funding all this stuff uh, as well too. So the contributors who've already earned a slot in the shout outs there is Majumalu Marcelo, Shadow of Harbringer, BTC Fork, Adam Back, Emergent Reasons, Imaginary Username, and Yeah Beer. That's it. Great. <laughs> Great name. Uh, thank you, everybody. I, I for... didn't see this till this morning, so I, I, I'm going to yeah. contribute right after, right after we're done here. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant. We just need to get those six BCH over the line. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Check out the Start Guide FAQ and links at www.bitcoincashpodcast.com. If you're new to the show, listen to episode 85, which will give you the background for every, what all of this is about. Try out Celine Wallet at Celine.cash. Get a ticket for Bliss at www.bliss.cash and work on a promotional video and submit it uh, to us because you could win free tickets and shout outs for the show. Starting with you, Alex. Oh, no. I mean, th thank you guys very much for uh, it's just you guys for having me on. It's been a pleasure talking about this. We had a wide range of topics, man. I mean, this, this is fun. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Um, I'm just, I'm really excited to see what the future has in store for us and how much we can all contribute to it. And frankly, this podcast, I think, is probably one of the best ways to do it. I, I, I mean, just to go on just a second here, I mean, I've seen how much more in the last year, how much more traction that like each each episode has gotten than a year ago. And it's been awesome to see this. So I think the more we can do stuff like this, the better. I, this, this is great. Love it, Jet. Uh, just everyone that contributed to the flip starter so far. I remember, I think it was yesterday I checked on it, and I, it was like four BCH, and now the update is that we're almost completed. So thanks, everyone. Yeah, yeah. It really makes a, a huge difference. So I guess I'll do the same. Thank you to everybody who's contributed to this or any of the earlier uh, flip starters. And obviously, it's an, it's an ongoing thing, you know, every 10 episodes. <laughs> we we need some more uh crypto and i am slowly uh you know increasing it over time as the podcast you know grows in size because there's more and more that we need to do to get it out to bigger audiences and to uh you know reward all the people involved and also trying to pick up more and more projects you know helping out with Celine and with bliss and everything like that so uh it really makes a huge difference they say you know money doesn't doesn't lie so when people put uh you know stats into the flip starter it tells me that we're we're on the right track so thank you very much to everyone who's contributed so far and will in the future all right that'll do it thanks for listening till next time So I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you a long way. And that is another thing that no one can ever teach you.